Demons and Hawks coming up on Grandstand AFL. Know the story with ABC News Digital. Get the latest breaking news with live notifications whenever you want, wherever you are. We are considering going to zero emissions. We'll go ahead as planned. And abruptly ended the case. It will help us all get back to normal and back to all the things that we love. Those are the kind of things that work. There's hope for a brighter future. ABC News, Australia's most trusted news source. Head to news.abc.net.au or download the ABC News app. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2022 AFL Premiership season. We're gonna be, we're gonna be kidding. Grandstand AFL on ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. Good afternoon from the MCG where COVID chaos has hit the D's. Perhaps that's the only thing that can beat them in season 2022. The Hawks will be looking to take a scalp after their impressive start at 3-3 three and three under new coach Sam Mitchell. Meanwhile, the unbeaten Ds will look to keep rolling on. They've got some pretty handy inclusions too with three Premiership players coming back into the lineup today despite the losses during the week. Good afternoon and welcome. Andrew May is with you here for Melbourne and Hawthorne. A pretty gloomy, cool... MCG as we're about to hit the winter months here in Melbourne. Chris Robottom is alongside me. Hello, Chris. G'day, Maisie. Yeah, a little bit of intrigue around this one with the uh, COVID outs. Perhaps the door slightly ajar uh, for the Hawks, but the D's looking to continue that 13-game winning streak and they lose a couple of stars. They gain a couple of stars, such as the way they're going at the moment. It's amazing how things can turn around. I was talking to a couple of people in footy about this. Now, 13 games ago, as you mentioned, with the D's, uh, they'd won two games out of the last six and had lost to 14th and 17th on the ladder. Uh, things can turn around pretty quickly uh, when it's all clicking, as it has over the last uh, four months of footy for Melbourne. Our expert team is littered with premierships this afternoon. Brad Saul, Hawthorne Great. good afternoon to you. Hello, Maisie. How's things? Hopefully this becomes the beginning of a Hawthorne turnaround of sorts. <laughs> yeah, well, it was good for two today. and a half quarters last <laughs> week. And they then were. Overrun by the Swans, who were uh, brilliant in the end. And Luke Ball as well. Ballie, hello to you. G'day, Maisie. Yeah, well, I was here Easter Monday, Asuli, mm. and that was a very impressive, impressive Hawthorne outfit. So if they bring that level of intensity to this game, then Melbourne will certainly know they've had a game. Um, it started around the middle. I mean, the ruck looms is a big advantage for Melbourne, but if, if Hawthorne can break even in the middle of the ground. They've got big strong bodies in there, some some young kids that are really impressive. Then, yeah, we might just have a game, but yeah, you're right, Maze. It, it, it's what's so impressive about Melbourne. I mean, that feels like ancient history ago. That stat you, you reeled off before, but it's why they're so good. They've got a squad of oh, God, 30, 32, haven't they? And when one goes out, another one comes in, and, and they'll just play the role. So, um, Look forward to watching him today, actually. We'll Bye. get stuck into the uh, very brief preview. We're a couple of minutes away from the opening bounce very shortly. But just in terms of the changes, so Pickett, Jackson, Sparrow, Petty and Neil Bullard all out uh, with the AFL Health and Safety Protocols. Melksham, Lever, Bedford, Viney and McDonald in for the Ds. Three changes for the Hawks. Bramble, Shields and Jackson Callow in for his first game. Uh, a pick in the mid-season draft last year. Ward, Granger, Brass have both been managed and Harry Morrison is also out. Out. The subs today, Daniel Howe will be the sub for uh, Hawthorne and Kyle Chandler for the Ds. So a couple of different faces out there for the Ds. Sully, Bawley, who's going to win this afternoon and by how much perhaps? Well, Bawley hitting the nail on the head. For the Hawks to have any chance today, it has to be around around the ball. That's where, where Melbourne have been so strong. That contested contested ball winning ability. Clayton Oliver is the, uh, is the key in and around the contest and... Um, and they're just travelling beautifully, aren't they? And their system, they've got their role players, uh, and everybody's contributing um, in, a, in a, a really even manner. And that's what we see in the best sides in the last sort of five to ten years. It has just been a consistent performance, consistent performance you know, across the field. Um, and Melbourne right now are in the middle of that sweet spot. They are, yeah. You were part of one of those teams, surely. And, and you almost welcome the challenge, don't you? Uh, and, and, and almost invite new challenges. Now, Melbourne, Melbourne's challenge this week has come uh, internally, hasn't it, in terms of personnel and things outside their control. But in a way, uh, in a funny way, Simon Goodwin and his charge would be almost pleased about yeah. that because it gives these guys an opportunity to come in, 
and stake their claim. And we know it's a long season and we know you need a squad of 30. So those guys get opportunities today. Neil Bourne's an interesting one, really underrated player. Uh, they'll, they'll really miss him today. So someone will have to come in and pick up the slack from that point of view. Simon Goodwin, of course, will be watching from his couch this course, afternoon yeah. as well as Adam Uza takes the reins for the D's this game. About to get set here under the lights at the MCG with the first bounce. Here's Chris Robottom. Up it goes. Max Lynch to take on Max Gorn, and it's Gorn who wins the first clearance, scrubs a little kick, doesn't manage to clear the centre square. Mitchell picked it up for the Hawks. His handball was chopped off by Melksum, who got it to Oliver. First 4A forward for the Demons. Inside 50 they go over the head of Fritch. It came out the back to McDonald. Handball over the top to Brown. Fritch butted up. It'll end up with Hardwick for the Hawks, who had Impey in the back pocket, and the Hawks are away outside of defensive 50. Impey, a long kick to Gunston, is OK, who paddles it to his own advantage. He's still trying to get round Langdon. Does eventually to McGuinness, who cuts back inside from right half-back. Poor kick. May should have taken the mark. Was spoiled by Wingard at the very last moment. Newcomb's there. Hand pass. Just miss Mitchell. Wingard runs onto it, though. Over halfway to right half forward. Gunston inside. 50. Good kick as well. And the mark has been taken by Kozitski. Constructed a well off half-back. Hawthorne looked like Melbourne had the numbers forward almost in the goal square. There's going to be a certain goal. Defended well and, uh, as I said, linked up and constructed well to find a, a set shot and goal here for Kaczynski. Yeah, all those little 1% are going to be critical today, aren't they? It looked like Stephen May was going to take an uncontested mark. Just got, to, yeah, just got to bring the ball to ground at every chance today, the Hawks. This will take his best. He'll kick from 52, 45-degree angle. It's got a lot on it almost. Goal umpire went down. Hawks are claiming it's a goal. And we're going to go upstairs, I think. Looks good. Does look good, and all of the Hawks are pretty confident as well, all high fiving each other, and they're all going to set up for a point. But I'm, I think they're optimistically hoping that this has crossed the line. Well, the goal umpire bit the dust, so there's no way he could see whether it crossed the line or not. And good decision by the field umpire then, because it's either going to be a goal or probably a ball up the tail. It's definitely a goal. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely kick. Beautiful kick. He's made it by uh, well, a good foot over the line there. No hand on that. So this will be the opening goal of the game to Hawthorne through Kaczynski after just a minute. Lovely bit of transition down the shame -worn stand side of the ground. And uh, every player knows it. Every supporter knows it. And finally, the goal umpire signals it. Opening goal on the board. Hawthorne lead by six. Couple of minutes into this first quarter. There was Wingard Sawley who yep. got the spoil. And May was actually really high up the ground. We're not used to seeing him up on centre wing. So perhaps if... It looks like he's got the Gunston match-up. Usually they try and orchestrate at the Demons where May stays deep, but that time he was caught up on the wing. And, and that's the order of the day for the Hawks forwards. And great to see Gunston back there, such a dangerous player. You need dangerous forwards who are going uh, to command attention from their defenders and not allow the May and Lever and these types to drop off, drop off an impact. So perfect start for the Hawks and perfect start for Jacob Kaczynski. Hawks are making a habit of the fast start. They kicked the first five against the Swans last week. They were unable to hang on on that occasion. And have landed the first blow here this afternoon against the reigning Premier. Back in the middle. Lynch won it down this time. Mitchell gathered the footy. Gave it off to Warple, who just scans uh, things ahead up the field. Kicked it to the bootlaces of Gunston. Good enough to pick it up on the half volley and get it to Newcomb. He thought about the ball inside before going back to Gunston by hand. Inside 50 go the Hawks. But it's a good defensive mark taken by that man, Stephen May. You just love defenders who back themselves to mark the ball. So the oops. May a turnover here as well. Oliver came steaming through, couldn't gather the ball. Gunston onto it, short chip, probably not far enough. Gives it to his mate Bruce, and you'd pack him here every day of the week. He delivers. And Hawthorne have the opening two after three and a half minutes here on Grandstand AFL. Fast start. Incredible luxury for Melbourne to have the likes of Lever and May down there. Just those you know, box sold defenders, as you said, to back yourself in the air. But he's just a bit lazy, May, in the transition there. And... Uh, a sloppy kick turnover. And again, when you've got the likes of those experienced, Gunston, Bruce, Mitchell's involved. Gunston just bought enough time, created some space, and Bruce, given time and space around goal, he's, uh, he's going to usually do some damage, mm. isn't he? Yeah, I mean, they're the benchmark, so we can nick pit early. And a couple of fumbles from Clayton Oliver. We're not used to seeing that. A poor kick from Stephen May off the one step, as you said. Uh, and the Hawks have got the jump quite as they did against Geelong uh, two weeks ago. So 
Couldn't ask for a better start. Good start by a young Lynch in the ruck too, competing against Gorn. 13 goals for Luke Bruce so far in 2022 as Lynch rises this time, but it's hacked out uh, of the centre clearance by Gorn. Melksham meets it at half forward, scrubs one inside 50 along the deck. Sicily might have been held. Umpire says no. It spilled out to Viney, who was wrapped up by Scrimshaw. And he's been pinged for holding the ball. Free kick Hawthorne inside defensive 50. It's great pressure and intent. That's uh, begun in the way that they're traditionally starting these games. They've been terrific around the ball, Hawthorne. Really emerging Scrimshaw, isn't he? I mean, a top 10 pick at the Suns, but now really coming into his own here at the Hawks. Good kick as well, straight up the middle. He finds Newcomb, who was thinking about going back to Scrimshaw. He might eventually by hand. No, he kicks it over his head to Frost. He takes it at left half back. Scrimshaw kept on running. Ignored by Frost. Frost short to Sicily. Sicily piercing kick into the middle. is an absolute beauty. Right into the centre of the MCG and finds Mitchell, who turns quickly, goes out wide. That'll land in front of Gunston, who can run onto it. Hand pass is OK to McGuinness as well, who can kick inside 50. He goes deep. Big fist over the top, May, that time. And Lynch a little sore as he gets to his feet. Ball in. Right forward pocket for the Hawks. Very promising start. They lead by two goals after five minutes. 23 possessions to seven right now. Melbourne just need to get their hands on the ball and just collect themselves a little. Five metres around from the right hand behind post. Hawks in attack. Shallow throw in. Gorn just double palmed it over his head. Warple will be first to it though. He shared it with Moore. Snap around the body. Low ball and Bruce Marks. Luke Bruce Marks on his chest. 35 metres out directly in front. Chance to kick a second. You're right, uh, Sorley. Uh, and if it was any other team than Melbourne at the moment, you'd be saying the coach would be hitting the panic button because they, there are all sorts of signs that they are still at the captain's run at the moment. Slow to move, defenders behind, giving their forwards way too much space, uncontested mark, inside 50. Luke Bruce sets oh. sail and it's off the side of the boot and he misses a golden opportunity to notch up a third straight for the Hawks. It's a minor score. They still lead, though, 2 one Melbourne yet to score. Six minutes gone. First turn. It's got to cash in, don't they? That was a shank. It, it was, yeah. Un unlike him. But got to cash in while the beast is asleep here. Mm, risky kick as well. Straight up the middle by Stephen May. Turns it over. Amira kicks inside 50. Bruce to Mark. Just slapped out of his hands at the last moment. And he'll go back from about 20 metres further out. He'll have to kick this from right on 50. Gives it to Sicily. Runs through the mark. Up <laughs> I says, come back. <laughs> Good try. Even that, though. Uh, yeah, again, yeah. this Melbourne team. So here he is. He's, he's still loose, Sicily. Just little signs that they are asleep here. So Bruce uses the man on the mark rule. He ends up taking a bit off it in the end. High jump by Kaczynski through hands and through for one behind. 2-2-14, Two -two the Hawks. Melbourne yet to score after seven and a half minutes here in the opening quarter. 21 uncontested possessions to two. Hawthorne's favour. Ben Brown takes the mark from the Stephen May kick in at Left half back for the Demons. His kick up the line is no good, but the Dees will come up with it through Viney. Back to Brown, who's still at left half back. He looks up the line and eventually just opts to dump it in the Max Gorn direction. He got hands to it and couldn't reel it in. Wiedemann down low. Won the contest on Frost. Fed it back by hand to Viney, who kicks to half forward where Langdon couldn't take the mark. Off hands, Sicily shared it with Scrimshaw. Short ball is good to O'Meara, who marks at the back of the square. O'Meara, across the face of goal. It's a good kick, too, to Shields. Shields, short one is OK, and McDonnell ends up with it just inside the boundary. Short kick back to Shields. He was strong in the contest, took the mark, kept on going, put Warple under pressure, and a hand pass immediately to Impey, and that's OK as well. Impey goes across the ground to Frost. Had a man outside of him, instead kicks inside 50. Made it everything but take the mark. It was bashed out of his hands at the final moment. Dees fans didn't like it. Lynch is wrapped up inside 50. It'll be a ball up 30 out from Hawthorne's goal. Oh, at the bite his tongue, Stephen May there. <laughs> up it goes. Hunt ripped off it. Mitchell came up with it. Snap on goal. O'Meara missing near side. Minor score only. Hawthorne peppering the scoreboard early on. It's 2-3-15. The Hawks. Melbourne yet to score. Nine minutes played in the opening term. Pretty calm conditions here at the MCG. It's about 14, 15 degrees outside. Lights are on already. May takes a couple of steps, then kicks as far as he can. Brown from three deep. Lep didn't take it. Viney bursting through the uh, stoppage. Now a chance further afield. Got it to Wiedemann, who might have been taken high. He was. 
as he hand passed to a teammate and he'll end up with a free kick goes short inside the center square to oliver who flare it out wide oliver goes wide to viney he's had a bit of the footy early he's yeah he's been good he's looked lively he's one of the one of the few demons that looks sharp at the moment 75 meters out from goal he just chips in board to brayshaw Concedes five metres, but Brayshaw will send Melbourne inside 50 in the brown direction. Sicily worked in underneath the footy and took the defensive mark for the Hawks. Right back pocket, Sicily. Fairly good crowd here in attendance as well. Twilight on a Saturday. Long kick around the boundary line. Lands in front of everyone, and Gorn's pretty happy to see that over the boundary line and out of bounds. A stoppage 70 away from the D's goal. He's given the traffic on the way in, Maze. I would have expected a few more than this. Yeah. It was 90. <laughs> it's like coming to Anzac Day. The punt <laughs> road was horrendous, Sully. Had to park the car and run here. Didn't help when there weren't any trains on my line either. I only realised that when I got to the station. Not ideal. Now Viney from the pack oh. sharks it, but kick inside 50. He's chopped off and flaring out wide. It's... OK, kick over the top, looking for Wingard on the wing. He takes it on his chest. Thought about going immediately. He holds it, holds it, and then pulls his kick at the last moment. It's a pretty good one as well. And uh, taking the mark is Callo. Goes back to Wingard, who then turned it over. Bowie there, and he's going to turn it over in turn as well to Bramble, who marked in front of Brown. Right in front of the commentary position here at the MCG. Bramble goes inboard to Impey. He retreats back to Sicily. He's got it in the middle of the ground. Sicily wants to go ac across the ground. He sees something he likes at right half forward. It was Mitchell, but Brayshaw got across, took the mark, played on immediately by hand to the running Langdon. Thumps it forward for the Ds, and getting back inside 50 was Fritch, who marked 40 metres out for goal. He points towards the big sticks. He'll shoot the Melbournes first. I was just about to, to give James Sicily a, a massive wrap, and he, he's been brilliant already. I know we're only 10 minutes and 11 minutes in the game, surely, but you get the sense that he loves taking the hard kick. And that one, when you're kicking the ball in the 45, 55 metres, there's just too much hang time. And Brayshaw was good enough to chop it off, chop it off and Langdon get it, got his overrun going going. So Fritch from 45, slight angle, he loved it off the boot. And Melbourne have their first after 12 minutes. Hawthorne 2 3 15, Melbourne 1 straight 6. 12 minutes gone, first term, grandstand AFL. Score a side ball. If we get to see May and Sicily at either end of, end of the ground here, just masters in that one-on-one -on -one body contest, it's, um, it's really something to behold. But you're right, he, he has got it. Customary, he just tries to hit that hard kick. Um, and if he can just pull that out of his game and just do the simple things consistently well, um, it takes that... He takes his game to another level and just get those errors just uh, removed completely. Christian Petrarca hasn't had a touch yet in the opening 13 minutes here at the MCG. That wouldn't have happened in a long, no, long time. Not a great sign for the Hawks either. <laughs> you think he'll get going at some stage. Looks like he's got the Na uh, Connor Nash's running with him. Yeah, Wiedemann's having a run in the ruck as well. Lynch won it down, though. Warpool, high kick outside the centre square. It'll land at the top of 50. May jostles with Gunston, worked him underneath the ball. Didn't take it himself, though. McInnes onto it, kicks inside 50. Smith there for the Ds. Gets the hand pass away to Lever. His hand pass is knocked down. He's got to go and fetch it. Taken down in a tackle, and then it's dragged underneath him by an opponent, the umpire says. He comes in as the Hawthorne fans were paying for blood in the forward pocket. Good forward pressure. Yeah, ball on the ground is a win for the Hawks today in that front 50. Kaczynski, the tackler, up it goes in the forward pocket. Wiedemann did the ruck work. Fed out a handball to the voice of Oliver. Couldn't get the handle on hands and knees. Was more scrapping them in the teeth of goal than Melbourne eventually rush it over for a minor score. Hawthorne got a 2-4-16. Melbourne won straight. 13 minutes played in the opening term here on Grandstand AFL. Andrew Mays and Chris Robottom with you, your experts this afternoon. Radsall, loop ball, high kick from May, outside of defence. Reaching over the top was Gorn, couldn't get on to it. Impey just slams it on his boot inside 50. And turning Brayshaw inside out was Gunson, who just read it better in the air. Took it on his chest, going back with the flight. And he'll kick from 45 on a 45-degree angle. Should be further in front, Hawthorne. 2-4. They've had their opportunities. 
So Jack Dunstan will start his approach about 15 metres inside the boundary line. Shane Warne stands side of the ground. Comes in, kicks from 45, low kick. He misses to the near side. Another chance goes begging. 2-5-17 the Hawks. One straight six the D's after 15 minutes. Hawthorne doing all the scoring. Jack Gunston played every game this year. They're coming back from pretty serious back injury. So Stephen May brings it in for the D's. It's on the outer wing. Pack of players goes after it. Here is Petrarca who picks it up. Feeds it to Max Gorn who is running past. He's got some time and space. Kick toward left half forward to... Nobody in particular. Langdon will get there first, but the boundary line will elude all comers and the ball will go over for a boundary throw in 60 metres out from Melbourne's goal. Hawthorne 2 5 17. Lead Melbourne at one straight six. 15 and a half gone in this first term. Lynch got up for the Hawks. Won it down. There was Warple feeding it back over his head. Here's Bedford for the D's. Out to Spargo now. Shares it with Oliver, who just weaves his way through traffic and hits a low ball to his mate in Petrarca. And Clayton Oliver just took the extra second, spotted up a short target, and Petrarca marked 45 metres out from goal, slight angle for the D's. Surrounded by three players there, Oliver. Just did enough with the ball to keep them at bay. Uh, and uh, ball to boot, just put the advantage of Petrarca. So Petrarca, a slowish start for him. The Norm Smith medalist, of course, from last year. He'll kick for Melbourne second, just inside 50. He lets fly from 45. He didn't like it. He never liked it. It's a minor score. Hawthorne 2 5 17, Melbourne 1 1 7. 16 and a half gone first turn. Sisley receives the kick in, which was short. He's in the right back pocket still. Has to get outside defensive 50. The kick is okay too. McInnes made it look better than what it was. Backing back with the flight and taking a good mark. 70 out from his defensive goal. He trots around right half back. Kicks long. Only one jumper there, Smith, but he spilt it for the D's. Now coming the other way for the Hawks is Newcomb. Received the hand pass. Banged it on the boot straight away. Lever taps to the advantage of Wiedemann, who's back there to help. Wiedemann's hand pass put Hunt under a bit of pressure. He gave it back to him as the ball bounced to him. Hunt tried to get out of a tackle. Spills free and out for a boundary throw in right half forward for the Hawks. So interesting start here at the MCG. Hawthorne with the first couple. Melbourne have wrestled back some control, but Lynch takes it out of the right contest on this occasion. Dylan Moore's kick is smothered by Oliver over the line. We'll have another boundary throw in, 65 metres around from Hawthorne's goal, searching for their third in this first term. Just gone full-time over in Adelaide. The Giants win by 59 over the Crows. Oliver Shark the tap, fed it up. To Viney, who just scrapped one forward for territory. Scrimshaw got it on the bounce. He couldn't elude Bedford, who slung him to the ground, got a handball out. It'll dribble over the boundary line. <coughs> Centre wing out of side. Another boundary throw in. Just starting to get motoring, isn't he, Clayton Oliver? Young Bedford gets his opportunity. He's been starting sub five times this year, hasn't he? So he gets his chance, and that's what he's in the team for with Neil Bullen out. Pick it out. That forward pressure. Luke Ball on grandstand AFL. Oliver, another clearance. This time it goes to Petrarca, who kicks long, deep inside 50. Frost had to fist it. He missed most of it. Got a couple of fingers onto the ball. Hardwick there to mop up anyway. Rushes the behind. Another one for the Ds. 1-2-8 they move to. 2-5-17 the Hawks. Nine-point lead, 18 minutes played opening term. Hardwick kick into Sicily, who... Got some separation on McDonald and the Hawks exit defensive 50. Newcomb marks just back of a wing out of side. And he just holds it up before trying something very risky in the middle of the ground, but it was good. It landed on the chest of Connor Nash. He has it just attacking side of the wing. He pops a high ball inside 50 for the Hawks. Mm. Melbourne player's best play, Stephen May, gets across and he's... Done that a few times before. Takes the intercept mark for the D. Yeah, poor kick by Nash. He's just got to get that deeper, doesn't he? Get off the mark and get some momentum. May short to Oliver, who turns it over to Newcomb, who goes long, very long, and Hunt with a great spoil. Front centre, McDonald, road snaps, goals! 
Well, that worked best for Hawthorne. They've been trying to get a goal from set shots over the last 10 minutes or so. But a bit of chaos inside 50 provides them with the result. 3-5-23 the Hawks, 1-2-8 the Dees, 19 played opening term. And it was the inside 50 entry there from Hawthorne Newcomb who just kicked it much deeper. Got it in, in behind May, wasn't in that contest. Uh, the ball was spilt to the ground and that, that's going to be the, the key for Hawthorne today. Getting the ball to ground, that pressure inside forward 50 giving them ult, um, you know, multiple shots on goal. Because with, with May down there in particular, every contest he's been in, it, uh, he's always marked it each time. He has. He's turned the ball over a couple of times, though, hasn't he? Yeah, they're, they're certainly still off the Demons. Uh, but those four and a half turnovers are, are critical because you can really catch a team out that wants to set up their defence behind the ball. And that's what they've been able to do a couple of times. Hawthorne, 15 points to the good. We'll have a recall in the middle of the ground. The bounce heavily favoured Max Gorn, umpire said. We'll have another go at that one, please. Gorn squares off with Lynch. Up they go again. This is a little tidier. Straight down to Wolliver, who's mobbed by a pair of Hawks. Newcomb and Mitchell tackle him to the ground. We'll have another stoppage right in the middle of the MCG. 11 inside 50s for the Hawks. So they've had eight scoring shots from 11 inside 50s, which is good effort so far. Now uh, slipping over was Ooh. Harms at the last moment. It was one of those ones where... It was either holding the ball or too high, and the umpire gave him the benefit of the doubt. The tackle just slipping over the shoulder as he went down. He'll kick long inside 50. McDonald with a run at it. Just got a little bit of a nudge. Impey couldn't gather. Oliver did. He was clean. Hand pass to Brown. A socket away from him in the end. Nice work. Bounces to Lynch. Now to Impey. Underground. Hand pass. And a big collision there between Harms and coming the other way was Day. Now a chance for the Hawks up towards the wing. O'Meara was up and then almost threw it to McDonald. Umpire blindsided. Bruce kicks inside 50. Out of the grasp there of Wingard. Coming in strongly was Brayshaw. Tackled. Ball spilt free. And then just cleaning the contest was Smith. Worked the one-two. And now Bowie is the outlet. He goes short to Oliver, who's got it on a string in the last 10 minutes. Oliver Marks just back of the wing, broadcast side, short kick to Viney, who's had a couple of kicks himself. Seven disposals for Jack Viney. And he goes short to Petrarca. So Oliver, Viney, Petrarca, the big names combine. He's on centre wing, runs... 10 metres, kicks inside 50 for the D's. Pat Forms, Jordan at the fall for the D's. He couldn't get the handle. Moore's there in defence for the Hawks, shares it with Sicily. He gave it to Wimpy by hand and he retreats to Newcomb by hand. Kick beyond defensive 50 in the McDonald direction. Bowie did well to keep it in. Fed it up to Petrarca. The D's are away now. 1-2 with Jordan. Petrarca runs to 55. Oh. And wonderful spot-up footy from Petrarca to find McDonald. 30 metres out from goal. Slight angle. A bit of class there from Christian Petrarca. Dylan Moore learned from that, wasn't he? Can't he? Yeah, one that's two. right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was obvious what he wanted to do. He just had to check the body. I know these days the umpires are, are onto that. Uh, and blocking a player's run, but he just had to make it harder for Petrarca to get around him to receive the handball, and a lovely little kick here for McDonald, who should goal. So Tom McDonald ambles on in and makes no mistake. Melbourne have their second. Hawthorne 3-5-23. Melbourne 2-2-14. Two, two, the Hawks lead cut to nine points. 23 and a half gone. First term grandstand AFL. Well, they're just relying on a bit of individual brilliance at the moment. Uh, the D's surely they haven't brought their word books at all and that'll uh, that'll be concerning well that'll be some ammo for at least for uh, well Adam Uze today isn't it too I wonder whether they think well the coach is sitting at home watching on the couch we can just maybe take it a bit easier today but and that's how they're playing that's how they've played this first 20 minutes they have you know keen just to almost see what the opposition are going to get we're not used to seeing this from the Demons and, and the Hawks have worked harder and been in harder at the contest and have earned the, uh, earned the lead, but just a, a, a bit of brilliance is, is keeping the Demons in it. So the challenge being laid down by the Hawks. Off to a fast start again. Lynch jumped high, but Gorn was there to win it down. Only as far as Mitchell. His kick intercepted to Bowie, who goes long inside 50. McDonald got rid of his opponent. Pat for pushing the back up. I said, play on. McDonald kicked the goal, but it's coming back for a free. I reckon that was the out-of-zone umpire might have called that as well rather than that 
umpire who was closest to the contest. Scrimshaw with the free kick goes short to Mitchell. True set half back. He releases Scrimshaw by hand who kept running kick to a contest. Max Gorn got in the way, floated across and took a strong mark in front of his opposite number in Max Lynch. He's just back of a wing for the D's. He goes laterally to Brayshaw. He'll go by hand to Oliver, who just snuck in off the interchange bench, and he kicks over the top. Now to Rivers, who marks right in front of the interchange benches. Ba kick barely went 15. So Rivers now for the D's. will send Melbourne towards half-forward. Brown direction. Fist came from behind from Frost. Oliver might have got one high. Managed to scrap his kick away. Tumbling ball now inside 50. Fritz will get there first for the D's. Wheels onto his left boot, looking for a target, and he found one. And it's the young man in Bedford sliding on his knees, taking the chest mark, and he'll kick for goal. Class by Fritsch, bit of balance, poise. Oliver again getting his hands on the ball in the contest. He's up to 10 possessions. I just wonder at what point in time do you, do you send a Warple, do you send a Newcomb to someone just to put the arm across and be a great learning lesson for some of those young, hard inside mids for Hawthorne. Toby Bedford will kick from about 40 metres out, slight angle. His first start for the season, he's been the medical sub six times straight. As Toby Bedford, he comes on in and locked it straight off the boot. The crowd tells the story. Toby Bedford kicks the goal. And Melbourne look to be humming now. The Hawks 3-5-23. Melbourne 3-2-20. 20. 26 and a half gone first turn for Grandstand AFL. Yeah, the beast is, is slowly waking up, isn't it, uh, Sully? And you're right, it's been on the back of, uh, of Oliver's brute strength inside. And... and I think you're right. You have to send someone to him. The problem is he's so good in that contested situation that it's, it's pretty hard to stop him from from having an impact. But you know, I think there's an opportunity there for, for a, a Warpool or a, a Newcomb to to go and, uh, and go to school in a sense. And nice finish from Bedford. I mean, he's got an opportunity, hasn't he? Him, him and some of these other younger players today have, a, have an opportunity to show that they can very much be called on when an, op when, when a, an opening arises. Measure of a good team, Melbourne at the moment. Haven't played their best footy, but they're within three points of the Hawks, who got off to a fast start. Gorn wins it down. Petrarca heard the voice hand pass over his head to Oliver, who's taken in a strong tackle by Wingard, holding the ball. And he wants to go Wingard and go quickly. He does. He kicks high. Inside 50. Who can get a run at it? Out the back. Hunt was waiting for it. Gunston looking for the toe poke. Almost went the hand pass in the end. He did get it, but it bounced through Bruce's legs. And then Warple came in. Should have been kicking in danger. And by waves play on. He got it back in the end, Warple. Kick only as far as Melbourne's Hunt, though. Who comes out of defence. Kept it low. Not enough penetration on the kick. Day takes a mark. Chopped off by Day. Right half. Ford for the Hawks. He gets onto his left boot, but he scrubs it along the ground, and it was picked up by Bowie, who released Brayshaw by hand. Thought about cutting inside. His kick was smothered by Warpel in the end. It'll go out of bounds for a boundary throw in 70 metres around from Hawthorne's goal. 3 5 23, the Hawks. Still lead by three points over the reigning champs. Melbourne 3 2 20. And it comes, Lynch and Gorn, Ruck contest, Bowie's been impressive, off to Gorn, off to Oliver, speaking of, he's tackled by Bruce, fed the handball up to Langdon, arch the back, back to Gorn, he's forced to just slam it on the boot, but it works out well. Mark taken by Melcham of the D's, who gets things moving immediately, progresses by foot to Ben Brown, who marks a long way out from gold, but he can put Melbourne inside 50, he spots up a target. And it's McDonald again who got some separation on his defender in Scrimshaw. And he'll kick for Melbourne's fourth. Yeah, smart play by both forwards there. The, the, the two key forwards, Brown. Just held the footy enough. He shaped to kick long, didn't he? And a little tick lead back from Tom McDonald. Nice forward craft. Easy, uncontested mark. So McDonald back in the team this afternoon. Had a run in the twos last week. He'll kick from just inside 50 for his second of the afternoon. And for the lead for Melbourne, he's missing to the near side. A minor score, Hawthorne 3 5 23. The margin two points, Melbourne 3 3 21. 29 and a half gone first turn. All to come back in. Bramble's got it in his hands. Need to be careful on the way out. He is. He finds Mitchell still inside defensive 50. 
Mitchell short kick to Sicily. Right half back, outside of defensive 50. Now just go into protection mode here, the Hawks, in the dying stages of this opening term. Nothing too silly. Sicily goes long to the wing. May up. Brought it down. Didn't complete the mark, though. Lynch got the ricochet off a couple of boots. Handed it to Bruce, who goes inside 50. Well done by Lever to keep it in front of himself. Boundary line's a win for him. Kajitsky, though, wrestles it out of his hands. Lever forced to tackle. Hand passes it back in board. May there. Tackling him is Warple of Hawthorne. And he's given away the free. Too high. Just a little crude in his attack. May wants to go quickly and hands it to Oliver. Oliver hands it to Brayshaw. Oliver receives it back from Brayshaw. And this time kicks to Harms, who marks on the outer logo. But the siren will curb another Melbourne 4A forward. Hawthorne 3-5-23 lead Melbourne 3-3-21 by two points. At the end of the first term, the goal kickers for the Hawks. Connor McDonald has one. Jacob Kaczynski with one. And a single to Luke Bruce for the D's. It was Bailey Fritch, Tom McDonald, and Toby Bedford kicking his first goal in AFL footy, all with singles. So our experts this afternoon on Grandstand AFL, Brad Sewell and Luke Ball. We've uh, got our audience joining us just in a couple of moments' time. So uh, before we get their input, let's... Uh, Get a bit of a, uh, a snapshot, first of all, of that first quarter, gents. Well, it went to plan for the Hawks. We, we said that they were going to have to uh, get, you know, get, bring their work boots and, and roll their sleeves up, and, and they did that. They, they dominated contested footy and uncontested footy in that first, probably the first 20 minutes of that quarter. Forced some errors. I think Melbourne were as sloppy uh, as the Hawks pressure forced as well, but uh, they were able to create some front half turnovers. Um, now, Stephen May, some uncharacteristic turnovers, and and generate some scoring opportunities from their 13 side 50s. Probably left a bit out there in the end, didn't they? They, they should have capitalised uh, a, f a bit more than they did. Luke Bruce kick, uh, missing a goal. He usually kick even Jack Gunston. You're backing to kick those eight times out of ten. So we made the comment that, you know, when Melbourne, the benchmark, when they're off, you've got to really capitalise. And they didn't quite do that. And then probably for the last five to seven minutes, the Demons started to wake up a bit and get going, and it was the usual suspects around the footy, Oliver. Thought Viney was, you know, was great from the start. Petrarca started to get his hands on the on the ball a little bit, and they started to get their game going, uh, you know, f f around the ball and then forward of centre uh, to, uh, to level up the scores. So, if you're a Hawks supporter, you're really pleased with how they performed. Melbourne clearly have more upside uh, to, to give, but and I suppose the challenge for the Hawks is whether they can maintain the range in this second quarter. Luke Ball, one of your experts on Grandstand AFL this afternoon, along with Brad Saul, calling the action for you, Andrew Mays and Chris Rowbottom. At quarter time here at the MCG, it is Hawthorne 3-5-23, leading the Ds 3-3-21. You are listening to Grandstand AFL on ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. If you're not going through an emergency situation right now, it might be the perfect time to explore the all-new ABC Emergency website. ABC Emergency lets you search for incidents near you, or you can check on other locations around the country. There's also a handy button that lets you listen to the local ABC radio station closest to the emergency. abc.net.au slash emergency. Save it in your favourites now, and keep listening to ABC Radio, your emergency broadcaster. The 2022 AFL Premiership season. Grandstand AFL. On ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. This will take his best. He'll kick from 52. 45 degree angle. It's got a lot on it almost. Goal umpire went down. Hawks are claiming it's a goal. And we're going to go upstairs, I think. No hand on that. So this will be the opening goal of the game to Hawthorne through Kaczynski after just a minute. May a turnover here as well. Oliver came steaming through, couldn't gather the ball. Gunston onto it, short chip, probably not far enough. Gives it to his mate Bruce, and you'd back him here every day of the week. He delivers. So Fritch from 45, slight angle, he loved it off the boot. And Melbourne have their first after 12 minutes. May short to Oliver, who turns it over to Newcomb, who goes long, very long, and Hunt with a great spoil. Front settle over McDonald, Rhodes, that's goals. Bowie did well to keep it in, fed it up to Petrarca, the D's are away now, 1-2 with Jordan, Petrarca runs to 55, and wonderful spot up footy from Petrarca to find McDonald, 
30 metres out from goal, slight angle. So Tom McDonald ambles on in and makes no mistake. Melbourne have their second. Toby Bedsby comes on in and locked it straight off the boot. The crowd tells the story. Toby Bedford kicks the goal. This is the 2022 AFL Premiership season. On ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. As we welcome our audience from South Australia to the MCG, under lights here in this twilight fixture on Saturday afternoon. The Hawks 3-5-23, leading Melbourne 3-3-21. Andrew Mays and Chris Robottom calling the action for you and your experts on Grandstand AFL. Luke Ball and Brad Sewell. For those who've just joined, uh, give us your best summation there, Sewell, of the first uh, half an hour of footy. Best summation there was Melbourne genuinely gave Hawthorne a 20-minute head start there. They <laughs> didn't show up at all. It was, I think at one stage, it was almost 28 disposals to seven in Hawthorne's favour. Um, dominated the play. I think they were 2-4 at one stage. Could have been 4-2, and uh, the scoreboard right now would have been much more attractive. But... Um, Melbourne then just decided they'd start playing. Uh, Petrarca in particular, Bailey Fritch, when they get the ball around the 50-metre arc, gen- generally Melbourne gets a shot on goal, and that's invariably what happened. And um, uh, Max Gorn is starting to have a bit more of a presence around the ground. Clayton Oliver's getting his hands on the ball at will. Um, contest and in general play, uncontested possessions. But you just get the sense that Melbourne didn't show up didn't feel like playing, didn't need to play just yet, gave the boys, gave Hawthorne a head start and they'll just claw them back and um, and the game will play out in uh, in Melbourne's favour from here. Petrarca was probably most evident of that. He didn't have a possession in the first 12 or 13 minutes of footy and had seven in the last 15. Yeah. Really yeah. there was up. a handful of them. It just looked like they were, even Lever coming back from injury, just, just looked like they were happy to, you know, take what the game was going to give them at the start, just have a nice ease into the game. But credit to the Hawks, they came out uh, with real intent and and they've done that. I mean, it shouldn't have been a surprise to the Demons. They've done that over the last month, as we know. But they do have gears, don't they, the Demons? These Good great teams too, really do, yeah. But again, you're looking at guys like Bedford, like Melksham, like Dunstan. They shouldn't be picking and choosing. They're well, the ones that, that, that have an opportunity today to cement a spot in the team. And this becomes really important to make up the team, their dynamic second half of the year, getting games to these young players who might be called on later in the year. Second quarter about to get underway here on Grandstand AFL. It is the Hawks by two. We're underway as the two Maxes go at it in the middle. Gorn won it, just kicked it up towards half forward. No mark taken. Fritch onto it, tried to kick inside 50. Ripped off it, affected the kick. And then it spills in the end to Day, who kicks out wide to left half back. It's going to pitch in front of Langdon, who gets there, attacked it strongly. Boundary line's a win for him. He lost his footing, though, and then good work by McInnes to work it back. Pressure was too hot, though. Turnover ball. Brayshaw, chip over the top is good. He finds Harms, who was thinking about going straight away, just holds it up. Popped it over the top to Viney, but the kick was average. The boundary line will get there first. It bobbles over for a boundary throw in 60 metres around from Melbourne's, Melbourne's goal. Stark contrast by Melbourne's effort there. Uh, big Max Gorn taking out of the ruck, ruck. Langdon running straight through the ball, hitting a body. Didn't see that in the first 20 minutes for Melbourne. In it comes, right half forward for the Ds. Gorn palmed it down straight to Langdon. High up and under inside 50 the Ds, but... Getting across and taking a, a classy in the set mark was Day for the Hawks. He has an inside defensive 50. Likely type, isn't he? It really is. Great looking athlete. Good overhead. Good on the ground. Plays on. Gets onto his left boot and finds McGuinness who cuts inside and his kick's chopped off by Oliver. Gave it to Viney. Back to Oliver now. Another disposal. Low ball inside 50. Looking for Wiedemann. Frost fist came. Hawks have the numbers. If Nash can... Trapped the footy, he couldn't. Milksham trapped him, he dragged it in, it bobbles out. Oliver hands and knees, fed it out to Brayshaw. Over the top by hand, now there's Bedford with a little knock on to Harms. He fended off his former teammate in Frost. Outside of the right boot, James Harms. Oh. <laughs> it's either a goal or a mark on the line. Take your pick. A Melbourne mark on the line, I should say. So an almost a certain goal versus an almost certain goal. <laughs> Wouldn't have wanted to bubble that. <laughs> And we're going to go upstairs and have a look at it. So you got to give Tom McDonald the benefit of the doubt that he didn't know where he was, surely, or <laughs> is he just sneaking 
A well, key forward. The end of the, he, the, end of the year. He was in the side the last week, yeah, that's too. True. In the goal column. <laughs> Ord will show us uh, another one, but I, I think he's going to get it. Tom Two, Mc isn't he? Tom oh. McDonald fighting for his place in this team. Maybe he's trying to take every <laughs> well, go into half a chance he three. can get. Three looks better than two at the end of the game, <laughs> doesn't it? It should go into a rock, scissors, paper. Or if I'm Tom McDonald, I'm, gonna, I'm saying, no, nah, give it to Harms. Give it Definitely. to Harms. Yeah, give it to Harms. Which he is did what, all the hard work. Which is what he's doing, to be fair, at the moment. He's walked away, yeah. Yep. But I reckon he's going to get it back. So, Do um, we need to spend too much time on this? I mean, the yeah. end result's the same, isn't it? Umpire is conferring. Result coming up on the screen, and Don McDonald will be paid the mark. <laughs> Still <Stiff laughs> right on the goal line. <laughs> it was actually terrific to play too from James Harms. It would have been a would have been a goal of the week contender, but anyway. So McDonald yeah, be ambles on in and makes no mistake from the top of the goal square, and he does owe Harms one. That's for sure. Perhaps we'll see that a little later in this contest. Melbourne go out. To 4 3 27. They have the lead now. Hawthorne 3 5 23. Opening minutes of the second term. Of Grandstand AFL. Oliver involved again. I think you're right. So I think you can't let him run. When he's in this sort of mood, you can't let him run around by himself. So whether it's Nash, it's big ass, I mean, isn't I'd, it, for I'd, the I'd Irishman? Be, I'd be or even just play. Yeah, I'd be Amira, Newcomb. Yeah, Newcomb, Amira. Just you can't give him space when he's in this kind of mood. He's up to 16 possessions already. First time in the afternoon that Melbourne have enjoyed the lead. It is four points in favour of the D's at the moment. We're back in the middle. Gorn will run at this pretty straight. Meanwhile, he's got to meet Lynch from the side. One and then two. Might have been taken without it. Lynch will end up with a clearance off his left. Snaps, but it's only as far as Brachel for the D's. He overcooks his kick, so Vonnie has to track back. Couldn't take the mark. He's got Day for company. McInnes in there. Was looking for O'Meara. Missed him with the hand pass. A chance for Sicily at half back. Hand pass is okay today. To Nash. Hand pass over the top. He's good too. McDonald comes out wider still, and he hits Shields on the member's wing. Lateral ball was a good one. Shields goes inside, 50 for the Hawks now. Bruce front spot, couldn't bring it down. McDonald off hands, gave it to Gunston. Snap around the body, straight up in the air. It'll fall to the top of the goal square for the Hawks. Bouncing towards the last line of defence. Dees have the numbers. Lever works it out. He missed Jordan with the handball. Still alive as three Hawks gather around the footy. Shields first there. Lever working hard at ground level. It'll eventually spill over the boundary line. It might be half a call for out in the full. Umpire says throw it in. 30 metres around from Hawthorne's goal. Right hand behind post. We'll have a boundary throw in. The secondary boundary umpire sprinted 30 metres to say, yep, that's the right decision. <laughs> in it comes once again. Gorn Lynch straight down to Harms. He's tackled off the ball. He dropped it in the tackle. Back towards goal now. Met strongly by Kaczynski. He was wrapped up by Lever. We'll have another stoppage. 30 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. So some good looks inside 50 here for the Hawks. They trail by four points. Gorn and Lynch in the ruck. Coming through the stoppage was Smith. Wingard, hand pass, no one in particular. Went to Smith, who didn't get his hand pass off straight away. Was taken to ground. Umpire says, I'll have it. 30 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. So doing OK to lock it in here, the Hawks. Can they generate a shot on goal? Lynch won the tap down. It's still pinballing around in the congestion there's a mass of players and you get the sense of free kick might be plucked out of here very shortly we'll have another ball up still 35 meters out from Hawthorne's goal and looking for their fourth and to wrestle back the lead Gorn won it down in the Smith direction ended up with Bowie who clears defensive 50 with a no look kick it eluded Day shoveled up by Hardwick to O'Meara back today got his left boot to the ball and he found McDonald who marks on the outer wing. McDonald back inside. The kick wasn't great. Impey had to go back and fetch it. He's got plenty of time though. Thought about taking on Langdon. That would have been a foot race we would have enjoyed. Thought better of it though. Flares it out wide to Sicily. He's got all the time in the world and all the space. He goes inboard to Frost. He goes to the opposite wing on the southern side of the ground to Hardwick. He flares it out wide to Mitchell. Mitchell still a couple of kicks from goal. McKenna sets up laterally, ignores him, instead goes high and inside 50. Gorn in pole position here. He takes a juggling mark, uncontested in the end. 
Well, it's the right method. It had every Melbourne player in their forward 70 there, the Hawks. So be, be patient, but the long bomb to Gorn doesn't work. Bowie released Hunt by hand, who streamed out a defensive 50. He kicked to Fritch at right half forward. Frost got across, made a contest, but he gave away a free kick while doing so. It'll be a Melbourne ball, 70 metres out from goal, right half forward. Bailey Fritch to take the free kick. Fortunately, didn't have to buy some time for Hawthorne Lambert to get back defensively. Melbourne were out otherwise. Gets onto his left boot, kicks inside 50. Wiedemann direction. He went to ground. Oliver at the fall. He's tackled by Dylan Moore. It spills out. Sicily awaits. Picked it up eventually. McDonald immediately tackled him. We'll have, have a ball up 35 metres out from Melbourne's goal. They lead 4-3-27 to the Hawks. 3-5-23. Eight minutes gone. Second term. Dees with the only goal this second term so far. From the stoppage, Mitchell, hand pass missed the target. Fritch dodged a couple of tackles, got to the top of 50. Hand pass to Jordan, hand pass to Harms. Did he get his goal this time? It's all the way to the line and through from behind. 4-4, 28 the Ds. 3-5, 23 the Hawks. Eight minutes played, second term. Sicily to bring it in. He's had a stack of it also. So far this evening, short one was to Scrimshaw. There'll be a 50-metre penalty. The player on the mark was Bedford. He might have just overstepped, and Scrimshaw will come into the middle of the ground and have a chance to send the Hawks forward. He plays on by hand to Connor Nash, who pumps the ball inside 50 by foot. Smith got front spot. O'Meara roped it beautifully, couldn't win a disposal. It came out to Brayshaw, whose clearing kick landed on the chest of Scrimshaw, 70 metres out from goal. Scrimshaw called to play on, forced a hand pass in the end. Day will just set this up, you think. Goes low and flat to the hot spot. Almost got out the back to Gunston, not quite. Mark taken in front there by Rivers. Who kicks up towards McDonald, right half back for the D's. Couldn't take the mark. Frost for the Hawks, hand pass to Warple. Kick back inside 50. Rivers infringed in that marking contest, going back with the flight. In fact, it's... Yeah, it is Rivers, who goes uh, centrally and finds May outside of his defensive goal square. That's an awkward kick, too. Put Langdon under all sorts of pressure. Intelligently slapped it to the advantage of Hunt, who's away, and he kicks long to Melksham. So there's a one-on-one. -on -one. Melksham gets in front of Hardwick and takes a nice chest mark just inside the boundary line. He's at right half forward for the Ds, out of side. And he just... Collects his thoughts and eventually puts Melbourne inside 50. McDonald direction. Brown got a run at it. Got a paw to it. Couldn't bring it down. He's tackled as he gathered the footy by Will Day. And will have a ball up 40 metres out from Melbourne's goal. An audition this week, isn't it? The three key forwards. You think that Jackson will come back next week? See if they can all play together or one will have to make way, you'd think. Petrarca has it now for the Ds. Fed it to his mate and Oliver. Little left football inside 50. Scrimshaw had work to do on Gorn. There was claims to the mark, but umpire said no. And we'll have another ball up. 35 metres out from Melbourne's goal. Scrimshaw, I think, thought he might have had that one as he gets to his feet. Tossed up. Hardwick with the hand pass to Scrimshaw. Snaps outside of defensive 50 over the head of Lever. Ball punched towards the boundary line, more so by Hunt from a couple deep, and it goes out of bounds at right half forward for the Ds. 4-4-28 Melbourne, 3-5-23 the Hawks. We've played 11 minutes in this second term after the Hawks kicked the opening two goals of the game, got out to another fast start. They've been pegged back ever since by the Ds. Toss back into play. Callow in the ruck. He's pushed underneath it. Warple there. Got around a couple as well, skirting the boundary line. Kick inside. He's not good. And the mark taken by Hunt. Just backward of centre wing, southern side. So Hunt marks the Warple kick. He'll zigzag one way, then the other on Bruce and kick Melbourne towards right half forward. Pack forms off the back was Day. Gathered the footy. Gave it to Callow. Up the ground, underground handball. Too hard week. Back to Callow. He's wrapped up by Oliver. Did he get his hand all the way? Umpire said no. Must have thrown it out in the tackle. Oliver short ball inside. Gorn all alone. 45 metres out from goal. Slight angle. This is his range, isn't it? Oliver involved again. The youngster Jackson Callow just needing to get the ball out of his hands a bit quicker than that. 
It's been a bit of a stalemate, really, hasn't it? The, the last 10 minutes or so, which probably suits the Hawks, but you just had the feeling that the weight of numbers from, from the Demons' point of view was, was going to win out. And yeah, he's been pretty de deadly from this range, hasn't he, this year, Big Max? Yeah. Enjoys them from here, that's for sure. He's kicked five for the season. Max Gorn yet to hear the scoreboard so far this afternoon. He sends it go with the Melbourne Cheer Squad go up and he gets it over the line. He waves the finger and says, thank you very much. This is my range. Melbourne at a fifth. 5-4-34 the Ds. Hawthorne 3-5-23. They're out to an 11-point lead. 12 and a half gone second turn. Bang on 50 and he enjoyed it, the big boy too, didn't he? <laughs> it's uh, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit of inside out. I mean, Melbourne getting those turnovers centre forward with the likes of Petrarca, Oliver, when they get their hands on the ball um, in that congestion, generally they find a spare play and stuff. If you Hawthorne, on the other hand, they just haven't been able to find that connection, haven't been able to get a mark in stuff. They've gone long on most occasions, and it's been shallow. And so when, when Gorn is there, when May is there, uh, I think you called it early bully, a win for Hawthorne is a ball on the ground, and they haven't been able to get that in their last... Half a dozen four A's forward. Brad Saul and Luke Ball, your experts on Grandstand AFL this afternoon. Lynch rises high against Gorn, tapped it, although Viney will shark this at ground level, ducks under a couple of tackles. His hand pass missed Oliver in the end, and Warple's on to it, although he turns it over by hand. Straight to Bowie, now to Viney, and here's the clearance. It goes short and out wide. And just pausing on it for a moment is Spargo who goes low inside 50 and the mark is taken by Gorn. Perhaps a little wider this time but a couple of metres closer to goal. He's running forward unmanned there for, uh, for five seconds there. Max Gorn took a little while for Spargo to find him but just popped in a bit of space laying Max run onto it and he's uh, this sweet spot again here. Can you make it two from two? Confident to be up. Beautifully read by Bowie force that turnover across half back. Just a smart little player, isn't he? Great decision maker. Love watching him play. Love watching this guy play when he's Whoa. in action as well. He's hit a nine iron. It's not going to make the distance in the end. It's punched back into play. Lynch tries to force it for a behind. He does. <laughs> that went as high almost as the fourth tier. The kick inside is no good. Spargo hand pass to Dunstan who snaps and misses everything. Out of bounds on the full. 15 minutes played second term. 5-5-35 the Ds. 3-5-23 the Hawks. So another chance for the Hawks to bring it in. This time it's Hardwick who's got a free man in shields across the ground. He marks it right half back. Clears defensive 50. Up the wing he goes. Hawthorne have the numbers and Gustin stands tall and takes the mark. Goes on by hand to Newcomb. He looks ahead and kicks to a contest inside 50. Getting across O'Meara. Palmed it down to his advantage. He'll rope his own footy. Feed it up to Bruce. Handball over the top now in the Kaczynski direction. But it goes out of bounds deep in Hawthorne's attacking zone. Boundary throw in. 15 metres good, around from the right hand behind post. Good ball movement, wasn't it? They, they, they got the ball on quick. Had the overlap run. Were able to get it in behind. Melbourne's zoning defenders give themselves a chance to score. D's lead by 12. Lynch over the back in the ruck contest. Straight down to McDonald. Picked up by Bowie who hacks it. Uh, attempting to clear defensive 50. But it only went as far as Dylan Moore who took the mark on his chest. Stood underneath it and marked strongly in front of Harms. He had Sicily running past with a shot on goal. If he elects to take the shot, it'll be from... Just beyond 50, well, he thought about playing on to Sicily. He fed the handball. The umpire said Probably no. Lucky there. And it'll be brought back. So Dylan Moore, deliberate approach. Right on 50. Let's fly to Dylan Moore. And that's a big kick for a little man. Dylan Moore nails the goal from range. And the Hawks get one back. Melbourne 5-5-35. Hawthorne 4 5 29, the margin back to six points, 16 and a half gone. Second term, grandstand AFL. I've got a question for you two experts in the back row there. How come he wasn't allowed to hand pass it to Sicily? Uh, I'll take that one on advisement, Major. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is, it, is, is any player, including your own teammate, allowed in the protected zone, or has everyone got to clear out? That, that, that might be my, my, uh, mm. my best guess, but. Geez, why, uh, why give it off when you can go back and kick it like that? He's a powerful little he guy, isn't he? There's not much of him, but 
He's been a sharpshooter this year too, and we saw him stand on someone's head last week too, so he's clearly got some some serious power in those legs. Well done. They needed that, the Hawks. They just needed, as you said, some reward, reward for effort. That's a steadier for, for them. 13 goals for the season so far for Dylan Moore. He's having fantastic 2022. Warple gets out of one tackle from the clearance. Kicks inside 50. Good mark by Lever oh. going back with the flight. His hand pass immediately turned it over. Gunston had a fumble. And then in comes Wingard. Too high. No. Umpire says, I'll have it. Melbourne are their own worst enemy here. Absolute pit of effort by Petrarca. Tackle in the middle. Just pushed off far too easily. An unforced error in effect, deep in their own forward uh, defensive 50 by Melbourne. Lynch over the top, good tap, down to Mitchell. He can't get it free, and it's held to him by Lever. Another ball up, 30 out from the Hawks' goal. Maybe unfairly, but it feels like Melbourne are keeping Hawks in the game. Chance to string two here together. Wingard won it off the tap, immediately tackled by James Jordan of the Ds. Another stoppage inside, attacking 50 for the Hawks. 18 minutes gone, second term. Down it comes again, Gorn got it down to Nash, who fed it to Bruce. Left foot snap, he doesn't miss many of these, but he does on this occasion, Luke Bruce. He misses to the near side, minus score the Hawks, so they get their shot on goal, but they blow it. Melbourne 5-5-35, the Hawks 4-6-30. Ball brought back into play by May, off the instep, little dicey there. Rivers takes the mark, he goes short to Bowie. Bowie shorter still. Mark is taken by Jordan. He's looking out wide again to Brayshaw, who's at left half back. Kick just had enough on it to get over the outstretched fingertips of Liam Shields below. And he in turn, Brayshaw goes short. Bowie, nice dummy that he sold. Then takes a bit off the kick. Viney won't get to this contest. Warple chops in from the front and takes the mark. Warple took on Viney. He forced him to kick across goal. It was dangerous. Hawks will come up with it, but only just. Diving handball from Hardwick out to Impey. He buys himself some time, and the Hawks will get out of jail here. They've got it on the outer side. Mitchell combines with Wingard. Left football inside 50. The Hawks, Dees have the numbers. Off the back, Kaczynski couldn't gather it. Jordan awaits. It's picked off, though, by Gunston, who gathered his own footy, stole it, and gold it. Or did he? We're having a look. <laughs> Doesn't look confident, Gunston. No, I reckon he went the moz on the umpire. Yeah, he he went the massive celebration. Because May did the same thing, went straight to get the ball <laughs> and kick it in. Yeah. <laughs> Probably is it. Oh, it'll depend on the umpire's call here because these ones are impossible to, Cut, to judge, yeah. really, when they go over the top of the post, don't they? Well, I think the umpire might have actually called that it would have hit the post. You ran a long way, Straight the umpire. over. <laughs> so we're just seeing it on the screen. The ball has gone directly over the right-hand goal post. Deliberations at ground level and on the scoreboard. You're right, Gunston's. Reaction probably tells the biggest tale for me. He wasn't, yeah. And it'll be a minor score to the Hawks. Had their chances this quarter. We've got a 6 7, or 4 7, I should say, the Hawks. 4 7 31. Trailing Melbourne 5 5 35. May a little bit deeper this time with the kick in. Petrarca was worked out of it that time by Newcomb illegally. Slung him to the side of the contest. Petrarca with the free kick. Called to play on. High kick over halfway. Sicily rises. Oh, three deep. McDonald takes a great mark. McDonald has no one on the mark, so he can keep going. And he is a little indecisive before picking out the run of Petrarca by hand. Inside 50. Brown thought he might have been infringed. He was mm. holding the man. I think that arm just drifted across and not a lot in it, but he'll receive the free kick. Yeah, I reckon Frost might have just... Got a bit of his yeah. jump up. Yeah. It was a penetration of the kick, wasn't it, from Petrarca that it created the panic from the defender and Brown was in a good position. Wasn't a lot in it, but letter of the law, free kick. So he's 10 metres inside the boundary, left forward pocket. He's going to snap around his body, Brown, and absolutely nails it. Doesn't miss. Never looked like missing. And Melbourne, after three scoring shots in a row from the Hawks and a bit of pressure at the other end, are able to convert. 6-5-40 won the Ds. 4-7-30 won the Hawks. 21 minutes played in the second term. Your experts on Grandstand AFL this afternoon at the MCG. Luke Ball and Brad Silk.
These picking and choosing, um, and when you're this good, you can sort of afford to. It was Dry uh, Newcomb who just who manhandled Petrarca here at uh, halfback. You would not normally see Petrarca much bigger in size and weight, uh, but got the free kick. And then uh, McDonald, a nice mark, th- you know, three deep. Petrarca follow up, and that penetrating kick just pan- panicking the defence of Melbourne. And when the next evolution ball that we sort of spoke off air about for Melbourne is that real killer instinct. and doing those things consistently well regardless of the score. We're not seeing that from Melbourne yet. Callow in the ruck for the Hawks. He won it down too. Got it to Mitchell. His handball only found green grass. Petrarca comes up with it for the Ds. Inside 50 they go. Hardwick did well to get a a hand to it. That was a beautiful gather from Bedford who won the handball out to McDonald. He fed it to Brown. Two in a row, Brown. Two in a row, Ds. 7-5-47 7-5-47 Melbourne. Hawthorne 4. 7-31. The D's by 16 points. 23 minutes gone. Second turn. Grandstand AFL. Jeez, a missed opportunity from Gunston. It turns into a, I was going to say, 12-point play. Wow. It's an 18-point play. Bruce isn't it, really? well. Yeah, Bruce. Left yeah, left yeah, and that's what they could do. And you're right. That is the next next stage for, for these great teams. And that passage of play, though, that you know, was a nice response. Petrarca getting... The handball received, pumping the ball long. Beautiful crumb from Toby Bedford. Well called. McDonald involved with a goal assist then. So that's good work from him. He's been on the end of a couple. Two big forwards linking up. And they go bang, bang. And all of a sudden, the Hawks are right under the pump. Yeah, danger times here. You feel for the Hawks. They want to just hang on to a manageable margin heading into half time. Still plenty of time to play out. From the middle, no one can burst clear. Dunstan's over it. He's wrapped up. Another stoppage right in the centre of the MCG and blood rule as well. I think it's Tom Mitchell who might have copped a knock. He'll be coming to the bench just above his right eye. Plenty of blood pouring out there. Daniel Howe, the sub, by the way, for the Hawks this afternoon. And Kyle Chandler for the Ds. Who currently lead by 16 points. Winners earlier today, GWS by 59 over the Crows. And Freo, what a win that was by three over the Cats down at Cadinia Park. So everyone reset. Nash back into the middle now, and we go again. Dunstan tries to burst through the stoppage. Got the hand pass away, and Milchum kicks inside. 50, and Frost takes the mark, and he's off as well. Hand pass was okay to Impey. Heart and mouth stuff from the big man. Impey out wider still to Newcomb, who marks behind the wing. Short ball was intended for more. He had to get it on the half volley. He did so and got it back to Newcomb, who just... Fended off Jordan. Dangerous ball into the middle of the ground, but Hawks have the numbers. Wingard picked it up, gave it to Impey. He's got a man out wide in Day. Finds him, and he releases Scrimshaw by hand. Back inside to Day. Chance to go inside 50 now for the Hawks. Deep entry at the back. McDonald couldn't quite. Umpire says there's been a free kick. It'll go Melbourne's way in the contest. Angus Brayshaw will come up with it in the right back pocket for the Ds. A bit lucky. He paid the mark, mark, mark there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's play on, isn't it? Yeah. He's played the old man in front, but he didn't hold it for long enough. So get away with one of the Ds. Beyond defensive 50 they go. Bedford now feeds it back to Rivers. There's Brown in defence. He's got Will Day to continue as he gathered the handball. He's taken the ground. Screams of ball. Great pressure. Umpire said Hawthorne free kick on this occasion at left half forward 70 from goal. Been great this quarter, Will Day. This will be possession number nine. He's looking at his options. Plenty of players inside 50. A late one here would be nice. He takes on Brown on the mark. Gets to 55. Puts it to the hot spot. Over the top lever. Big fears. Free but kick. free kick. In front, Kaczynski wins it. Left forward pocket. A more of a dangerous kick. It wasn't the up and under big air time. There's a bit flatter, disallowing Melbourne to set up defensively and um, uh, you know get their hands on the balls as they've done in previous contests. May penalised. Didn't seem to be a hell of a lot in that. Kajitski, forward pocket, snaps, and Hawthorne get a bit of reward for their good work earlier in the quarter. They have their fifth of the afternoon. 5 7 37 the Hawks. They peg the margin back. 7 5 47 the D's. It's back to 10 points. 26 played. Second quarter on Grandstand AFL. Well, he wasn't in a good position, the umpire, wasn't he? But it was pretty tough to see from here. It just looked like a lot of bodies and arms and. Yeah, it's holding on. Not a lot in it. But yeah, yeah they, they take it. Yep. Um, as I said, the umpire right there. So 
well done though from Kaczynski. That's his, that's his second. And he's competed pretty well at times. Went, I think you're right, Sully. In those situations where he's able to engage May and not let him start off and run and have a jump at it. And, and you're right, a lot of it's on the kick in, being a little bit more of a five iron, I suppose, compared to a nine iron where May has to reach for the body. And it was a nice kick from Day. Set up by Will Day to tackle pressure and then to get around Brown to get in a little bit deeper behind the defence. So back to 10 points. The Hawks get one back. In the middle we go. O'Meara will win the clearance. Tumbler inside forward 50 for the Hawks. Hunt might have been held. He won the footy anyway. Handled it out, but he missed. Jordan Moore came through. He was wrapped up. Hawks fans want high. Umpire said play on. Rivers came through, picked it up. His handball was picked off by McDonald of the Hawks. Kick inside forward 50 in the Gunston direction. Hassled by Lever. Picked up the ball 360. And he's been pinged for holding the ball. Jack Gunston. Lever all over him. Both grubby balls going forward for Hawks. They look more dangerous than when it's given air time. Lever. Long kick from the left back pocket. Gorn's his target. Pushed underneath it. Lynch spoils to the front. Nash pushed out of it by Gorn. And then uh, Jordan just got a kick through, only as far as Newcomb. A couple of hand passes end up with O'Meara, deep inside 50 with his kick, no mark taken. Gunston tries to wrench it free, it spills to Petrarca though, who dribbles a kick right up the middle. Oh, there was pressure on Frost, it clean bowled him. Wiedemann runs into Frost, good tackle and good follow-up. Ball spills free, and it's going to be a high tackle in the end to O'Meara. So O'Meara... Defensive side of the centre circles goes to Sicily, who has every player on the ground in front of him inside the Hawks' half. Sicily ambles through the middle of the MCG and thumps a long ball inside. 50 oh. for the Hawks. May got up at the back. Couldn't reel it in. Ground level ball now. Gunston couldn't win the handball up. Gorn came up with it for the D's and he released Jordan on the outside. He's got time and space to have a bounce and exit defensive 50 via left half back over the top of... Brett, ben Brown, who was just worked underneath it by Sicily, who infringed, and he'll take his free kick right in front of the interchange benches, centre wing broadcast side. Didn't need to make contact, did he? He's involved no. with himself there, Sicily. Had a, uh, had a spare player back to the hawk, so let him off the hook. Brown short to Dunstan. Takes the mark just inside the boundary. As Rivers in front of him, instead he goes... Jordan in front of him rather, goes a little bit longer instead, Day couldn't take the mark, Gorn turns Rover, hand pass straight to Sisley though, has to wrestle for it, ends up kicking it off the ground, Dunstan in front of Mitchell takes a strong mark, it's coming back in for the D's. Dunstan, short ball inside, Levers come up the ground, he marks in front of his opponent in Gunston. He will send Melbourne inside 50. Deep entry. Top of the goal square. Off hands at the back. Wiedemann tumbling towards goal. It's across the face. In fact, it stayed in. and It'll end up going out of bounds for a boundary throw. And a couple of metres around from the right hand behind post. Ruckman just gathering. Close to this stoppage inside 50. Diesel desperately want one here in the dying moments of this second term. Margin was out to 16. It's back to 10. Toss back into play. Gorn just wrestles Lynch out of it. Has a crack at goal. His kick was smothered. Langdon from the boundary. Oh, no. Floats it. Not again. All the way to the goal line. <laughs> <laughs> he almost had two goal of the year contenders. And Frost takes it right on the goal line. Good kick out too to find more. More marks. Cuts inside. Short ball's good to Impey. Still inside defensive 50. The Hawks. He's got a man all the way. Across the ground in Sicily, uses him short ball, he misses the target to Sicily, but O'Meara had time to feed it up to Hardwick. Sicily kept running, received from Hardwick, and his short ball is good to McGuinness. Evade to tackler, handball back to Sicily. Right football now to be a shallow entry inside 50, wing guard too deep. Lever claimed the mark at the back of the pack. Umpire said no, he was tackled, got rid of it eventually. Ball remains in play, umpire arrives on the scene. It goes out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in 40 metres around. And Hawthorne's left hand behind post. D's lead it by 10. Ball to be tossed back in the play. Ruckman gather, Wiedemann and Lynch this time to go at it. Lynch won it down, looking for the run of Wingard, who gets out of one tackle. Right foot snap, almost over the head of May, who did well to trap it and force the rush behind. Very late chance there for the Hawks, with just over 30 seconds left. Actually looked pretty lively, Wingard, today, I reckon, surely. 
He's zipping played a heap of footy this year. Yeah, he's looked like he's uh, he's got his zip back a bit, which is uh, great news for the Hawks forward 50. Nine-point ball game here at the MCG. D's bring it in via May. Long kick beyond defensive 50. McDonald couldn't take the mark with the free kick. Came is against Will Day. He's got it just back of a wing in front of the commentary position. He kicks up the line in the Gorn direction, thumped from behind. Came down to Jordan, who gave it to Petrarca, shared it with Gorn, back to Petrarca. Tumbling ball inside 50. Wiedemann had two Hawks to contend with. Scrimshaw came up with it, went backwards to Lynch, whose handball found Impey, whose kick found Sicily. But there is the halftime siren. Melbourne wrestled back the lead. They'll take a nine-point advantage into the second half. 7-5-47 the Ds. Hawthorne 5-8-38. Goal kickers. Two to Tom McDonald, two to Ben Brown, and singles to Bailey Fritch, Toby Bedford, and Max Gorn. And for the Hawks, two to Jacob Kaczynski, and singles to Connor McDonald, Luke Bruce, and Dylan Moore. In case you missed the results earlier today, GWS by 59 over the Crows and Fremantle by three over Geelong at Cadenia Park. At halftime here, 7 5 47 the Ds, 5 8 38 the Hawks who did some work in that second quarter when it looked like Melbourne could get away from them sorely. They yeah. did their best to stay in it. Conflicted. I don't want to take anything away from Hawthorne's pressure because it's been really good. And that's what kept them in the game because when the ball's been free-flowing and, and Melbourne just dialed it up and you mentioned boy, Melbourne have got gears and it became really clear and evident there. When Petrarca gets involved, when Oliver gets involved, he went really quiet. And cold there all in the second half of that second quarter. We hardly saw him at all. But when they, when the key playmakers decide to, to roll the sleeves up, there's no stopping them. Um, and Melbourne are in that zone whereby they can pick and choose. And right now they're doing enough to keep their nose in front. Um, but that's not taking anything away from Hawthorne's pressure either. Um, Will Day, fantastic effort on the far side, just uh, epitomises what Hawthorne have been able to do today. The, the pressure in and around the contest, they're tackling, um, they've let themselves, going, let themselves going down, going forward, just continually bombing it long to the advantage of May and Max Gorn. When they have got that extra handball and been able to get the kick long and deep in behind the defence, and when it's been a scrubby kick forward into the Ford 50, that's when they've looked dangerous. Yeah, that, that's right. Melbourne... You're right, dialed it up around the footy. So plus 16 contested possession that quarter. So that's uh, that tells me that they that they would have highlighted that and they were deficient in that in the first quarter. So they dialed it up. But you're right, pressure, uh, credit the Hawks with their ability to uh, force the Demons to, to play a different way in a sense. They didn't get their flow going. You, you can't picture too many you know, really nice chains of footy that were, where they were able to take the ball from their back after their forward half, which we know they do so well. So, yeah, the Hawks uh, pressure around the footy, but also the way they're able to structure up uh, up the ground to, you know, made it really hard for Melbourne to get any flow going, but it's a beauty of Melbourne and the way that their team's set up. They can beat you in a lot of ways, so when they're not flowing and, and you know, moving the ball and chaining the ball like they would, they resort back to a long kick, get a contest or a mark, and they've got the cattle to be able to do that. They've got, you know, big tall forwards, down the line or they go to a Gorn down the line and if they don't mark it there's a clear reference point for their smalls to get front and centre and they surge the ball forward that way so credit to the Hawks that, in a sense that they're able to or they made Melbourne uh, attack more that way that quarter and not really score freely uh, even though Melbourne started the quarter really well out of the centre bounce but uh, yeah, I, I was you know, but still been really impressed because you, you did have a feeling at some stage that the, that the Demons were going to shift you know, shift into another gear but but the Hawks are, are competing really well. So let's hope they can continue to do that and make it really hard for the Ds to to get any sort of or any semblance of flow in their game. Their key ball winners seem to be getting a bit of it, the Ds, but they just haven't quite had that sort of uh, dominance over the game. And, you know, if, if, we'd, if we'd said 15 each for Petrarca and, and Oliver at half time, you would have said they, they're in front by a bit more. I think the pressure around the ball from Hawthorne's been pretty good, um, which has probably nullified the key ball users for, uh, you know, their, their impact around the contest. So um, I think Mac Lynch, you know, Hawthorne Ruck, Lynch has been has been pretty good against Gorn, um, competed well, and, um, you know, at times Gorn's certainly got him top. He's the best Ruckman in the competition, so he's going to do that. So, um, you know, all you can ask is a, is a contest and 
um, and around the ground just prohibit Gorn from getting his hands on the ball too often and um, and and getting involved when the ball hits ground. Yeah, it was it was interesting that quarter as well when Hawthorne had their periods of dominance. Melbourne really did park the bus. You know, there was a couple of times where they had 18 players all within 70 metres of of, uh, of Hawthorne's goal, which is not necessarily the way they usually go about it, the Demons, which says to me that they were under pressure and that, you know, the Hawks repeat inside 50s and 450 pressure was worrying them a bit. They weren't able to capitalise, you know, a couple of missed opportunities from, from senior players too, which you just have to take, as we know, against the best teams. But, yeah, overall, you know, impressed by Hawthorne's effort. Uh, and willingness to stick at the task and, and make it really hard for Melbourne to get their game going. Yeah, they've got a bit of work to do, both sides, in this second half. 7-5-47, the Ds. 5-8-38, the Hawks. We'll get more expert thoughts on the other side of the ABC News from uh, both Brad Sewell and Luke Ball, your experts on Grandstand AFL this afternoon. Uh, plenty more action coming up in the second half. Before that, though, the latest from the ABC Newsroom. ABC News with Satyam Weinstein. Federal Labor is accusing the Prime Minister of making politically timed announcements about the cost of medicines. Immediately after the federal budget, two senior government members told Parliament the price of drugs on the pharmaceutical benefit scheme would be cut by $10 a script. That announcement was then revoked, but Scott Morrison's today outlined the details. Labor's yet to say if it supports the minister, but Shadow Finance Minister Katie Gallagher is questioning the timing. He's got wind of something, he's made an announcement that he, his own government has abolished twice. Now, it's not about cost of living, it's about his political convenience. Now, there is a real issue about the price of medicines. Stay tuned on that front. Meanwhile, a royal commission into the robo-debt scandal will be begun by the end of the year if Labor wins the election. The scheme, which was subsequently ruled unlawful, was rolled out in 2015 and used an automated system that measures a person's average income to claim more than a billion dollars in alleged debts from Centrelink recipients. The Royal Flying Doctors are set to get $15 million to expand their health services and modernise their ageing airport hangar at Launceston in Tasmania, regardless of what party forms the next federal government. Both the Labor and Liberal parties have committed to funding the redevelopment in the key electorate of lines. The hangar was originally built in 1998 and supports Tasmanians across the state, including on the Bass Strait Islands. The Tasmanian chairman of the Royal Flying Doctors, Malcolm White, says the need for the service is increasing. We need to renew that facility now and upgrade it substantially. Also combined with our uh, primary health services and dental services that operate from this site and that will allow us to um, significantly expand our facilities here at uh, Launceston Airport. Russia says it's evacuated more than a million Ukrainians to Russia during the more than two-month-old conflict as Ukraine continues to accuse Moscow of taking people against their will. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov was speaking on a Chinese state media as the BBC's Laurie Callis reports. Throughout the interview, Mr Lavrov again maintained that the war in Ukraine was simply a special military operation. Since it began, he said over two million people in Ukraine had asked to be transferred to Russia. More than half of those, he said, had been evacuated accordingly. The foreign minister added that among the people transferred to Russia were 120,000 foreigners. Also included were people evacuated from Donetsk and Luhansk, areas which Russia regards as breakaway republics. Mr Lavrov also again blamed the Western Military Alliance NATO for, as he put it, standing in the way of a negotiated settlement of the conflict with Ukraine. Kazain Maxwell has lost a bid to overturn her conviction on sex trafficking charges for her role in helping Jeffrey Epstein sexually abuse teenage girls. U.S. Circuit Court Judge Alison Nathans upheld the guilty verdict on three of five counts, including sex trafficking. The judge had rejected two other convictions that could potentially reduce her sentence. The UK's health security agencies identified a total of 145 confirmed hepatitis cases in children aimed amid a series of unexplained cases around the world. The agency says 10 children received liver transplants but none have died. Findings from the group suggest the sudden rise in cases in children may be linked to a common cold virus but investigations into other infections including COVID-19 are taking place. A new COVID subvariant has been detected in Melbourne's southeast. Phil Johnson has the details. 
The Omicron substrain is a variant of the BA2 Omicron variant which continues to be the dominant strain in Victoria and has been detected in a southeast metro Melbourne wastewater catchment. Victorian health authorities say they'll prioritise the sequencing of PCR samples from COVID-19 cases in the wastewater catchment area to get a better understanding of the prevalence of the strain. It's been detected in North America and Europe and early evidence suggests it's more transmissible than BA2 but does not cause more severe disease. Ian Chesterman has been elected as the new president of the Australian Olympic Committee. Our sports reporter David Mark with the story. 62-year-old Chesterman takes over from John Coates, who's stepping down after 32 years as AOC president. He beat the former Olympic swimmer Mark Stockwell by 67 votes to 26. Chesterman is a veteran sports administrator, having served as chef de mission for six Winter Olympic teams and last year's Tokyo Games. He won widespread praise for safely managing the Australian team through the pandemic and then during the successful Tokyo Olympics. David Mark, ABC Sport. You're up to date with ABC News. You can get more news from our website at any time. Just head to abc.net.au forward slash news. To watch the latest stories from ABC News and clips from our current affairs shows online, it's time to go direct to the source. Australia's most reliable news can be found on ABC Radio, the ABC News app and the ABC News website. Download the free app now and stay across local breaking stories, updates and analysis from Australia's most trusted news. What matters to you matters to us. And it's all on the ABC News app and news.abc.net.au. The 2022 AFL Premiership season. Grandstand AFL. On ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. Back to Callow, he's wrapped up by Oliver. Did he get his handball away? Umpire said no. Must have thrown it out in the tackle. Oliver short ball inside. Gorn all alone, 45 metres out from goal. Slight angle. Max Gorn yet to hear the scoreboard so far this afternoon. He sends it goal with the Melbourne cheer squad go up. And he gets it over the line. He waves the finger and says, thank you very much. This is my range. Melbourne out of fit. Right on 50. Let's fly to Dylan Moore and that's a big kick for a little man. Dylan Moore nails the goal from range and the Hawks get one back. So he's 10 metres inside the boundary, left forward pocket. He's going to snap around his body, Brown, and absolutely nails it. Doesn't miss. Never looked like missing. Petrarca comes up with it for the D's. Inside 50, they go. Hardwick did well to get a a hand to it. That was a beautiful gather from Bedford, who won the handball out to McDonald. He finished a Brown. Two in a row, Brown. Two in a row, D's. Zitsky, forward pocket, snaps. And Hawthorne get a bit of reward for their good work earlier in the quarter. This is the 2022 AFL Premiership season. On ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. Welcome back to the MCG Under Lights as the Oz Kickers are enjoying their time in the spotlight here at halftime where it is Melbourne 7 5 47 leading Hawthorne 5 8 38. Andrew Mays and Chris Robottom calling the action for you this afternoon and Luke Paul and Brad Sewell, your experts on Grandstand AFL. Plenty of action earlier in the day. Wonderful win by the Giants. 59 point winners. Over the Adelaide Crows, 17-11, 113 to the Crows, 8-6-54. Toby Green starring with four goals, which came pretty early in the game. And he was outstanding to provide the spark after they got off to a fast lead, 11 goals to two at halftime there. So a 59-point victory for the Giants. And earlier in the day, what a win it was for Fremantle. Away from home, down at Cadenia Park, And they ended up taking the chocolates. Uh, A nice last quarter, 10-9-69, the Dockers to the Cats, 10-6-66. Fremantle kicking six goals to five in the second half to run over the top. They were outstanding on the road, away from home, where Geelong have been so dominant over the last couple of decades. Let's uh, have a listen to one of the stars of the show who's been there and done it all before, David Mundy, who caught up with Lauren Borden. I've got David Mundy here after the big win at Cardinia Park. It is a remarkable victory to come to Geelong and beat the Cats. What was it like out there on the field, especially in the tight, tense last moments? Yeah, well, we got a few things wrong in that last five minutes. So, yeah, it was a bit closer than we would have liked, but it's a big trip for us coming from the other side of the country. Um, And we played pretty well, to be honest. So, yeah, it's a nice, nice feeling. 
And you must have been happy with your second and third quarters. The pressure was up. You couldn't hit the scoreboard. But were you happy with the way you were going? Yeah, I think the second and third quarters were able to play our football for longer periods. It was probably most pleased, I guess, with the first quarter because they got out to a few goals and we were able to kind of just wrestle a bit of momentum back and score a bit on the scoreboard to keep it a bit uh, pretty tight at the quarter time. Um, but, yeah, obviously the second and third quarters we were able to push ahead. You would have been expecting a lot of intent coming from Geelong and obviously they produced that in the first quarter and then in the last quarter were you expecting them to come back again at you in that last little bit? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're a great side and they have been for a long time. So, we, yeah, we were fully cognizant, I guess, of them having a have real dip in the game and they got a bit, bit of field position and the crowd got a bit noisy. So, yeah, it was pretty tense. And I guess externally, some are surprised at the rise of Fremantle this year. What was it like internally for you? You've been around footy a long time. What were your feelings as you came into the season? Yeah, we've been together for three years now, essentially, with Justin. Um, and we spent a lot of time together in hubs over the last two years in particular. So... The, gr- the group's been growing and um, certainly we've been able to more consistently apply our game plan on game day, which has been great. And Blake Akers, last week he produced a goal of the round nominee. Today he roasts one from 55 metres out. Do you think he's just going for goal of the year? Yeah, Blake's had a terrific start to the year and, and they're the uh, cherry on top of his game at the moment. He's, um, the physical pressure he's putting on the opposition and we know what a great runner he is on the outside for us. So he's having a great year. And it's a really big win today. How does this set you up for the next block of matches? Well, I guess we just tick this box and move on. We've got you know, a different kind of challenge next week and, and we'll focus on that um, after we've celebrated this win and um, re-gear for North Melbourne next Friday night. Fantastic. Thanks, David. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Tracking along very nicely, the Dockers moving to second on the table and they are putting themselves in some sort of position to attack this season seven. And uh, six and one they are after the opening seven rounds of the season, uh, sitting in second behind the unbeaten Ds. Uh, David Mundy is, I think, Sully, only about 18 months uh, younger than you. Less. But yeah. Less. Yeah, the both of us, yeah. 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 No, it's embarrassing for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've been out for forever, and he's still, get, he's still, he's still doing and it. And dominating, too. Yeah, yes. Playing good footy. Hey. Oh. People it's ridiculous. Like, oh, people like that annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> it is ridiculous. When you think about it, too, test, Dave, he's, yeah. I mean, we uh, over on this eastern side all complain about having to travel once or twice a year to Perth. He does it every Incredible. second week. Yeah. Yeah, he does, uh, and it's not as though he he doesn't take you know hits. He's, he does. He's not a contested ball winner. He's yeah, you know, he's a, he's been a, a remarkable that, player. I was about to say he hasn't lost any speed, no. but I don't know if he had much. Well, he's anyway, got, so he's got the blessing, decept- wasn't he's it? He's a loper, isn't he? Yeah. It's sort of deceptive the way the way he covers the ground. He's just got that. Beauty. He's a beautiful kick, isn't he? And yeah, that's where that's why he's so valuable to that team. And now. I mean, the way they're going, he'd be sniffing, you know, some, some September action, as he should. It, the good thing is, I mean, Fife isn't out there yet, is he? The, yeah. the, the, all of a sudden, these young guys are the ones that are driving the club forward, and he's sitting back and just, you know, just being a, a bit player. So, oh, he'd be loving his time. What is it the con- contrast between what's happening there and, and up the highway in, in WA? It's just incredible, mm. isn't it? Yeah, The turnaround there. Yeah, I think that pleasing thing for Fremantle fans too. It looks sustainable. It looks like, yeah. it's, it's as you said, it's all the kids a doing brand. a lot of the work. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, and defensively, they are so set at the moment. Yeah, he's, he's obviously you know, doing some great things, Justin Longmuir uh, and his team over there, uh, Matty Boyd as well. So, no, things are clicking for them. Uh, and I think Sean Darcy didn't play today. Mm. Matt Tabernard didn't play. So they're, they're building some depth. I uh, watched them three or, three or so weeks ago. We don't see a heap of them here, do we? As you said, uh, Maisie, but they got speed too. They got some real speed around the edges and guys that haven't played a heap of footy, but are really nice sizes, good athletes. Got some great role players. They're healthy, so there's some real, you know competition for spots, and they're being really well led. So uh, not a heap, uh, not a not much in terms of weakness at the moment with with the Dockers and the way they're going about their footy. It's great. Has been some sort of start of the year, as it has for the D's as well, who are six from six, looking to start at seven and zip after this afternoon's game. Seven five forty seven at half time. Five eight thirty eight. The Hawks. The margin nine points. Hawthorne have had patches through that uh, opening half. If you Sam Mitchell sitting in the rooms. We might throw this one to you, Sully. What are you, what are you saying to the troops to try and just stay with them and then perhaps launch an attack late in that last quarter? I mean, you'd be telling them that you're right up to it, boys. You're into your up to your necks in it here. Pressure and intensity is the only thing that's going to keep you in it, and so that is that is going to be the that's what will be judged on um, at the end of the day. And if if that can be maintained around the contest, um, uh, I'd be addressing some of the forward fifty entries. 
um, and just try and get that in a little bit deeper and, um, and those kicks a little bit harder and flatter and a bit grubbier at times as well. Take the most of your opportunities and, um, and you know, we're going to find ourselves right in this game late. Yeah, they weren't able to uh, to respond to the challenge when it came from a really good team last week, were they, in that last quarter? So that'll, that, that'll be fresh in their minds. And yeah, I agree, surely, yeah, starts at the contest again. Melbourne wrestled control back around the contested footy that quarter, uh, in that second quarter, you know, were plus 16. So they don't want to... Uh, they don't want to drop, you know, drop that number by too much in this quarter. They want to get that back on track, and then but just be patient with their ball use. At times, you know, when Melbourne have got all their players back, just be patient and be smart. And I think the deep entries are the ones, surely. If they're going to get play numbers back, deeper entries, create a contest, bring the ball to ground, and let's see if we can create some chaos around the uh, around the ground ball inside their forward fifty. Those flatter entries too, just engage May, engage Big Max Gorn, and don't let them run and jump at the ball. Couple of matchups, guys. Uh, Connor Nash has gone to Clayton Oliver or went to Clayton Oliver in that second term, kept him to five disposals, and uh, Finn McGuinness has gone to Ed Langdon out on a wing. But it was the second half of that second term where Melbourne started to get on top despite those uh, defensive matchups employed by Hawthorne. Do you stick with them or do you? Or do you change it up? I think you stick with them. I mean, you're not going to, you know, you won't be able to squash all of Melbourne's playmakers because Petrarca then started to get some ball there as well. So. Um, I really like Oliver's work around the contest and his ability then to get up and, and run and create and be an option from the contest um, is impressive to watch. He's incredibly fit. And so I like the idea of just uh, staying on top of you know, Langdon's run. It's obviously worked. And, um, and try and nullify Oliver also. It looks like Connor Nash making his way to Oliver at the centre bounce. So Hawthorne will persist with a couple of those defensive matchups, They trail by nine points going into this second half. We are back underway for Grandstand AFL as Oliver gets the first kick out of the middle. It was off the ground, a scrubber, but it'll end up with Spargo who gave it to Harms. Chance for the Ds to go inside 50 for the first time of the second half. Kicks to a contest. Brown lost his footing. Fist came across. Oliver in the forward pack pocket slid towards the footy. Didn't gather it. Nash ended up with it. His kick was a bit of a no-looker, but it ended up with Shields at left half back. Could have gone anywhere. It was a lucky one in the end. <laughs> now Bramble off his left. Tries to kick it back inboard. Kajitski, was he ripped off? An umpire waved play on. Chance now for the Diesel. Smith turns it over. Now O'Meara just checks the kick nicely. Not quite able to take it was more. Bowie ripped off and holding the ball. Good follow-up. Bramble onto it. Takes the advantage. Shields inboard. Good kick as well. And he finds Kajitski who had tracked back. And that's good work by the big man. He'll line up from about 45 out directly in front. Yeah, good call, Mosey. Yeah, good work, Ray. He, he felt like he should have got a free kick here on the wing, but he uh, he didn't stick around. He, he turned around and put his head down and worked hard to get back inside 50 to uh, to create the option. But it was that forward pressure, forward half pressure again, surely, that you mentioned at half time that earned this shot at goal. Kick the opening goal of the game and another in the second quarter. This for his third. He's pushed it left but snuck it in. Another nice start to a corner from the Hawks. They score the opener within 90 seconds. 6 8 44. Closing the gap on the D's. 7 5 47. Your experts on Grandstand AFL, Brad Sewell and Luke Ball. Amira missed that short 45. Initially, May managed to get across to cut it off, but then Liam Shields just lowered his eyes um, just outside the 50, whereas maybe in that first half we would have seen him just blindly kick long, but lowered his eyes, found Skazinski and um, and that will be the difference for the Hawks. If they can make the most of those opportunities, they're riding it. Let's try. It was Dylan Moore that laid the big tackle yep. on uh, on Bowie too that uh, caused the spillage to Shield. So, yeah, perfect start. Exactly what they needed to do early in this third quarter. Point of interest, last time these two teams met, it was a draw here at the MCG. So maybe Hawthorne knows something about the Ds. The rest of the competition don't. Back in the middle, O'Meara ripped off the ball, got his handball away. Oliver hands and knees. Viney now tracks it, manages to gather it. He's tackled by O'Meara, spills out in the contest. Nobody can gather the footy cleanly. Eventually, Bramble does, got it up to Newcomb. 
who has a target out wide in Moore, who thought about going. Kick inside 50, Gunston direction over his head, fell into the arms of Warple, scrubbed the kick forward. May went after it at ground level, fed a handball outside defensive 50. Gorn got there first, fed it to Bowie. Looping handball, middle of the ground to Viney. He'll release Petrarca, middle of the MCG. Chain of handballs go the D's. Now it's with Harms. Calls for a leading target in McDonald. Got it to him. He didn't take the mark but had the arm chopped. And it'll be a Tom McDonald free kick. Harms looking after his mate from the second turn. That's better, wasn't it? The Hawks just got caught, ball watching a bit. He's got too many committed to the contest forward of the ball, and it was May who's repelled so many attacks, knocking the ball out. Bowie, the handball over the top, and a couple of Melbourne players left in the middle of the ground. Pretty hard to stop from a defender, defender's point of view when you get that sort of service coming through the middle of the ground. So Tom McDonald kick from a 45-degree angle, 40 metres out. He kept it low, and it just missed the left-hand side. It shaved the outer side of the left behind post. Minus score, D's. 7 6 48 Melbourne. Hawthorne, 6 8 44. Two goals, two this afternoon for Tom McDonald on return. Had a stint at the lower level last week. Kick three. Back in the team tonight. Sicily receives the kick out from Scrimshaw and he chips it back over the top to him. Still inside defensive 50. Barely 15 metres that. And Scrimshaw assesses his options, runs the boundary line, then kicks long. Lynch in front of Gorner, got to the back of the pack, Hunt there for the Ds. Hand pass over the top is OK. Rivers just had a fumble at the, uh, Jordan rather, at the vital moment. Got it to Bowie, he never fumbles. Hand pass though, missed the target, threw a couple of sets of hands. It ends up with Sicily to the wing, spoiled away from Bruce. And turning it over is Smith. He, he goes short inboard to Dunstan in the centre square for the Ds. Too far out to score Dunstan, but he'll send the Ds forward. There's a man in space in the forward pocket, Brown. Well, the free kick came. Frost for front on contact. He probably didn't need to engage him in the manner he did. He gave away the free kick, did Frost, and Ben Brown will kick for his third from a tight-ish angle. 25 metres out from goal. Well, it wasn't front on contact, wasn't it? Because they were both facing the ball, but he technically did interfere with Brown, who was out the back there by himself for a good five or so seconds. So he'd lost him, Frost, and in the end, in the scramble to get back to it, to contest, he gave away the free kick. So the run-up began at 65 metres out from goal. He set sail from 35 metres out and put it through. Ben Brown has three. And he erases Hawthorne's first goal of the second half. The Ds go out to 8-6-54. A 10-point margin now. The Hawks 6-8-44. Five and a half gone. Third term. Grandstand AFL. Has he got your confidence when Brown's got the ball in front of goal? Um, and you know that uh, as that it competes so well in the air, and when he extends his arm, it's almost impossible to spoil the ball. And the only way he can then infringe is, is by grabbing his arm, which ultimately what happened. He, McDonald, I mean, Max Gorn's down there now. Those talls are a real asset for Melbourne. The other end too, Joel Smith's a, an improved player, isn't it? I mean, again, we talk about competition for spots. With Petty out, Tomlinson out, he's uh, he's really standing up. Wiedem in the ruck now for the D's. Didn't win the tap down, although followed up with a good tackle, holding the ball. No clear hand pass there from Callow, so it will be a free kick to Wiedemann, who hand passes to Brayshaw, who was behind him. Mark taken by Dunstan out on the left half forward flank. He keeps it low as he goes inside 50. Great kick to the leading Gord. And Gorn marks 48 from goal. This will take his best. Dee's just starting to get on top in this third term. 10 points the margin. Nice kick from Dunstan, wasn't it? Just drew Gorn to the space. A centre bounce clearances where you know it's 6 6 6 ahead of the ball. You can go forward with speed, with confidence that you're going to get a one on one matchup. Now, his last set shot for goal went as high as the fourth tier. And Shane Warne stand. Let's see how he goes this time. Gains a couple of extra metres. Goes long and does it perfectly. A big finger wave to the Shane Warne stand. 
hit that a lot better than the previous effort. He has a couple this evening. And the D is just starting to get to uh, a nervous margin for Hawks fans. 9 6 60. 6 8 44 the Hawks. Seven minutes played, third term on Grandstand AFL. It's invaluable to have a ruckman to go forward and hit the scoreboard in the way that he does. A really clever kick, wasn't it? And Hawthorne didn't. The play wasn't slow enough for Hawthorne to be able to get back and, and sit in that hole. They were one on one in front of the ball. Couldn't pull the numbers back and uh, really clever kick. Max Gorn, he must be one of the best set shots in the league from 50 metres plus. He does not seem to miss from that range. And a second for this evening for the Ds. Wiedemann straight down to Oliver will be recalled middle of the ground. So out to a 16-point buffer now, the Ds. Hawks kick the first of the second half, but Melbourne have hit back with two of their own. They're in the middle of the ground. Nash won it from the tap. Oliver tackled him. Out to Petrarca. Handball only as far as Bruce Dinananda. Players converge. Out to Nash now. High ball towards half forward for the Hawks. Wingard gets underneath it. May met it. Off hands to Newcomb. Got it off to Wingard, who was streaming inside 50. He got the handball to Moore. He oh. got it to Gunston, who just spun it on his finger like a Harlem Globetrotter and snapped around his body and missed. 9 6 60, Melbourne. Margin back to 15. 6 9 45, the Hawks. Kick out. He's very good from May to find Brayshaw, left half back. He streams underneath the Shane Warne stand. A long kick, couldn't quite find Brown, who tried to rein it in with the one hand. Going laterally, and he spills it out of bounds. Ball to be tossed in, just forward of halfway. A lot of half chances, Hawthorne. Gunston there, another one against a side such as Melbourne. You need to make the most of them. Toss back into play. Gorn. That time just grabs it out of the ruck. He's really starting to dominate this game. Kicks inside 50. Ball bounces a couple of times away from Brown. And it's paid deliberate. Wow. There wasn't too many in the region, but from a, con uh, a congested stop, it's pretty hard to hit a target when you're snapping from 70 metres away. Frost will take the free kick. Right back pocket for the Hawks. Kicks to a contest. Lever brought it down. Handball out to Brayshaw. Now Petrarca. Short ball towards left half forward where Spargo takes the diving mark on his chest. Takes on the man on the mark in Sicily. He's eventually forced to just dump it to the goal square. Frost at the back of the pack. In support was Scrimshaw for the Hawks. Kept it in against the boundary line and he handballed it to Newcomb. He just got a little high one on the way past but... He ran it over the boundary line. There will be a boundary throw-in, 10 metres around from the left-hand behind post. Melbourne's attacking zone. Ball will be thrown back in. Forward pocket for the Ds. Shallow throw-in. Callow onto it. Tapped it into congestion. Oliver heard the voice. It was Langdon. We've seen him kick him from there before, but not this time. It's the belly of the ball. It almost went out of bounds on the full. And punch through for a boundary throw-in next to the behind post. Thoughts on that deliberate, gents? Uh, no for me. No. no. Throw it in. <laughs> Not quite. You don't see it when they kick it forward too often, do you? No, there wasn't a lot Max could do no, from that that's situation. Too, give Max too much credit there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Callow down to Hardwick, and Hardwick clears. And there is Gorn. Couldn't take the mark on this occasion. Well done by uh, Warple. Hand pass over the top is OK to Moore. And Moore short, although... Set guns a bit of a task. May comes through. He has a fumble as well. Moore followed up well. Works the one, two, and then kicks inside 50 to Wingard. Great running, Dylan Moore. And Wingard will line up from 45 out, slight angle to the left. Wasn't it? Yeah, he's just a really smart player, Dylan Moore, isn't he? High work rate. We know he's got a big tank. Perfect for that high half forward roll, getting up the ground, getting involved in the outlet kicks across half back. And then just pinning the ears back and working hard forward. And he runs off for a well-earned break. But really smart user of the ball too. Two goals to one in this third term in favour of the Ds. They've opened up a 15-point gap on the Hawks. They wouldn't want to let it get to much greater than what it is now. Wingard, crucial kick at goal, comes in and sneaks it in. And he's pumped. 
And the Hawks hang around. 7-9-51 to the D's 9-6-60. 12 minutes played third term on Grandstand AFL. A couple of really important, clever handballs. It, um, one of the basics of the game, the handball, when you can put it actually out in front of someone running forward, you don't, you don't lose a yard. You don't have to check your speed to go back and gather the ball. And that was critical in that passage of play. Warpool just to bring the ball back inside. It was Kaczynski just to put the ball out in front of more a number of efforts in that transition and uh, he's been terrific today in four possessions in that in that passage of play including the goal assist to uh, to Chad Wingard that's terrific stuff that is textbook high half forward play that well done need two in a row here the Hawks to really put the pressure on the Demons they're taking it up into the reigning champs that's for sure back in the middle Nash got it to Warple they'll go for it again here the Hawks tumbler inside 50 Mitchell at the fall off hands tackled by Brayshaw ridden into the ground Melbourne fans want ball they'll come up with it the D's Rivers clearing kick outside defensive 50 a good one to Viney who's got Bedford streaming forward on the near wing he gathers the footy on the bounce targets a plenty inside 50 takes two bounces kicks to the right forward pocket it was a little ill-directed. Frost got across, didn't take the mark. Hawks fans want a free kick on Brown. Nothing doing, says the umpire. It's all wrapped up at ground level. We'll have a ball up in the right forward pocket for the Ds. Right in front of the Hawthorne cheer squad who thought that Ben Brown may have chopped the arms getting across on Frost. Hey, we've seen a few of those play today. A little bit stiff. Lynch goes up against Wiedemann in the ruck. Wins it down to Warple. His kick was smothered. O'Meara ground level to Bramble. He's tackled to the ground and will have another ball up. 25 metres out from Melbourne's goal. Players gather themselves. D smelling a goal deep forward. Bedford came through the stoppage and then... Had a flying shot at goal off the ground. That was never going to go in, and he skewed it off the side of his boot. Out of bounds on the full. A little spark plug, Bedford, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's lively, <laughs> isn't he? You can see why, though. Just with that use a couple of times, he, he sits behind Cosy Pickett in the pecking order at the moment. Shields, long kick out of defence. It's OK as Scrimshaw works his way to the front of the pack. Hand pass to Bramble, who had uh, company straight away. He takes it all the way to the boundary, which is a win for the Hawks. And it's going to be thrown in at 70 metres around from the Melbourne goal. They trail by nine points. 15 minutes into this third term. If you're listening to us in South Australia or Western Australia, you'll hear St Kilda and Port Adelaide after this one. Everyone else is heading to Carlton and North down the road. D's by nine, third term of the MCG. Petrarca rode the Gorn tap, a one-on-one -on -one inside 50. Frost and Brown, it'll go the way of Brown. Free kick. He was just wrestled to the ground, and Ben Brown will receive the free as the players go on with it. Impey's in there. Sicily, as you'd expect, he maybe faints half <laughs> a dive. as well. Milks him too. A couple of firebrands get after it. Go oh, Frosty, he gives you his... Heart and soul, doesn't he? He just gets a little bit sloppy at times. He's he gives away a lot of free kicks. And when he genuinely won out against, uh, you know, Ben Brown, one of the tallest players, strongest players in the comp, just clutching. So Ben Brown will take his shot about 30 metres out from goal. His run-up has started inside the centre square. In he comes. 25 steps later, leans back on the kick. No mistake, Ben Brown straight through the middle. And the D's extend the lead back out to 15. 10 6, 66 Melbourne. Hawthorne 7 9, 51. 16 and a half gone. Third turn here at the MCG. Grandstand AFL. It's the uh, heavyweight champion boxer, aren't they? They're, just, they're resorbing a lot of blows and then just, just keeping the opponent at arm's length. Just and mind feels... you, he's still in third gear. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we know that. But uh, but again, I think a, a lot of the credit has to go for the to the Hawks for the way that they've they've pressured them. They just haven't been able to break it through the two goals in a row to really get within. And as, I mean, as reach. we saw Hawthorne last week, the challenge for a young side is the, the four quarters. And when it, when it drops away, it can be pretty dramatic. Ball back in the middle. Margin 15 points. Wiedemann leaps high in the ruck. Down to Viney. Dees are away again here. To Dunstan, who has to dart back to get onto his left. Deep penetration inside 50. Brown might have been held more that time. 
He wasn't. Umpire says play on, and the mark is taken by Scrimshaw, who flares it out wide. I reckon Newcomb might have been his intended target, but it got to Moore instead, who kicks a high ball over the top. It's good to the run of Mitchell, who marks it on halfway, five metres inside the boundary. Mitchell. Just back of a wing, not much on inside, but the kick was affected off the mark by Dunstan. Did enough to turn it over, but it was off hands. It'll come up through Bowie, who released harms by hand. Right football now towards right half forward for the D's. One on one contest. McDonald and Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw went to ground. McDonald come up with it. Cut a ball inside. Very beautifully picked up on the gather by Melksham, who released Bedford by hand, and he streams in and kicks another for the Dees, his second of the night. Melbourne 11 6 72. Hawthorne 7 9 51. A tick over 18 minutes gone in the third turn. Dees by 21 points. A couple of tired sort of efforts from the Hawks in there. Mitchell just uh, allowing the ball to get smothered. A couple of one-on-one -on -one contests and the, the, the class of Beth, the speed of Bedford running forward. Great finish. Again, another good handball into space, laying him to run onto that. Yeah, Melksham it was, wasn't it? Terrific handball into space. Another goal from turnover. You're right, sloppy stuff from Tom Mitchell. He's better than that, the Brownlow medalist. From a slow play to learn himself. And good effort by Dunstan, and that's the sort of stuff he needs to do mm -hmm. to show that he wants to be a part of this team. Just to get a hand in, the smother affected the kick. And from there, they're able to chain the ball through for goal. Back in the middle, Wiedemann still doing the ruck work. Down to Viney, off to Petrarca by hand. Kick slewed off the side of the boot. It's high. Brown will get a run at it. Sisley worked him underneath it nicely and took the chest mark. He wants to go immediately. Pulls the kick, looking for Warple v Bowie. Bowie nudged him underneath it, and then Bowie plays it behind his own legs. But Warple did the work at ground level to bend down and get the ball. Did well. Hand pass to Moore, who rifles a pass to Callow, who's at left half forward. Runs around the man on the mark. Nice stuff from the first game. And lowered his eyes, just missed the execution. It reaches Wingard on the bounce, who snaps on his right boot, in, uh, right to the top of the goal square. No mark taken. May pulls it in. They dive on top. Umpire says it's mine. Left forward pocket here for the Hawks. They desperately need one. 21 points behind the Ds. 19 played third term. Nice move, Jackson Callow at left half forward, and he contests the ruck now with deep in the tap for the Hawks. Melbourne free kick for an over the shoulder. It'll be James Jordan to take it deep in defence. Luke Bruce infringed to stand the mark. D's by 21. Jordan, right football, clears defensive 50, looking for McDonald, unable to take the mark, but rove the ball up to Petrarca. Ooh. Front on contact will be against Mitchell on Melksham, who went low. And won a free kick. He's at right half back, short ball to Jordan. We'll pop one over the top to Dunstan. Jordan kept running, received the handball right in front of the commentary position. They work it up the wing here, the D's short ball. Good to Petrarca, who eventually looks inside and bites one off to Milksham, who takes the mark right on the centre wing logo. Milksham. Long kick inside 50, Brown and Wiedemann to oh. fly at this, Wiedemann from the front. Floated across, going back with the flight, Pat could have crunched him, no one got him. Just when he does that, you go, how has this bloke not played 100 games and kick, kick big bags of goals? Maybe it's just a, an opportunity thing, he's had struggles with injuries and maybe this is his chance, isn't it, to, uh, to really come of age, but... Geez, that was a good mark. Wiedemann, 40 out, 45 degree angle to the right, kicks Drawley. And the D's fans are up and about as they've opened up a 27 point margin deep into this third term on Grandstand AFL. It's going to be tough from the Hawks from here. They need, desperately need one in the closing five or so minutes. Just building Melbourne here, aren't they? Feels like it's. Uh... One-way traffic and get uh, get here pretty quickly. You did feel, I mean, looking at it on paper before the game, the, the aerial battle on a, on a you know nice clear evening was was always going to be a an issue for the Hawks. And I thought they they battled pretty well in that first half, and it wasn't really an issue. But as the game goes on, the Melbourne's tools are you know, really starting to loom and look dangerous, aren't they? And they were they were so worried about Brown McDonald then that they you know, they, they left uh, Weedering unopposed to come in from the side. Lovely mark, and he is a good kick for goal too. 
Back in the middle we go. Lynch and Gorn go after it. Gorn won it decisively into the path of Petrarca, who gave it back to Gorn. Ungainly kick towards half forward for the D's. Knocked away. Langdon goes after it. He went in hard on Lynch. Knocked him over. Bruce was ripped off the foot. He came up with Oliver, who on a left foot oh, ball forward bench. towards half forward. And it'll be a free kick to Oliver. He'll take it back in the centre square. He'll play on and send a right football deep inside 50. Wiedemann flies again. Fist from behind. Knocks it out towards the boundary line. Fritz just patted it to himself. Kept it in. Hassled by Hardwick. Wonderful handball to Dunstan who was running on the outside. Five metre kick to Petrarca. Shakes the tackle. Round the body. Something from nothing. The D's. Petrarca goals. His first of the afternoon. And the Demon train is rolling now. They're out to a 33-point lead. 13-684 the Ds. Hawthorne 7, 9, 51. 23 and a half gone. Fourth third term. Grandstand AFL. Clever play by Fritsch then, wasn't it? A few of the Hawks switched off thinking he was going to take the ball out of play. Just good enough to keep it keep it alive. And wasn't pretty, was it? Dunstan involved. Petrarca is starting to really impose himself on this game. And... This is the, the challenge, isn't it, for the Hawks? We saw them last week concede the last seven or eight goals of the game with the Swans. These better teams, and a couple of years ago, you might be able to put one or two players behind the ball. You can't yeah. do that anymore. They're starting to really smash them out of the centre bounds with with Gorn and Petrarca in particular. So they've just got to get some get some senior bodies in there, the Hawks. You, know, you look down, and it's Newcomb and Warpool. So the... Uh, the learning continues for these Hawks midfielders. Six out of the last seven goals for the D's. Newcomb, though, with the clearance. Hand pass to Warple. Inside 50 with the kick. Took a bit off it. Almost a mark taken in front by O'Meara. Paddles it to his own advantage. Running towards the boundary line. Can't quite bring it back enough. One behind. So Nash is now going to Petrarca. He's done a great job on, on, on Oliver. who only had the three. Petrarca's had nine for this quarter already. Kick in from full back. Off the boot of May, finds Viney, and May kept running, received the handball, they go straight up the middle of the ground to the Ds, Hardwick stands tall in defence for the Hawks and takes a good mark, just back of the wing, out of side. 32 points in the blink of an eye, and this Melbourne juggernaut just have gears that other teams don't seem to have, including the Hawks this afternoon. Can they conjure something though? More off left half back. Not if they kick it like that. He's turned it straight over to Spargo, who marks on centre wing. Gets things going immediately. Pulls the kick to Harms, who marks 55 metres out from goal. He'll send Melbourne inside 50. Dangerous spot, top of the square. Floating across. Frost couldn't take the mark. Sicily at the fall. Went in hard. Jordan laid the tackle. Trouble. Oliver came in. Did he drag Oh. Oh, no. he did. Was dicing with, with danger. James Sicily deep in oh, defence. Bit of mercy there, I think, from the umpire. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a drag in holding the ball any day of the week. Corner to do the ruck work. Just grabs it, snaps it, smothered on its way through. Well done by Warpool, who smashes it into the goalpost. One behind. 13-7-85 the D. 7-10-52 the Hawks. From full back, kick beyond defensive 50 was a good one. More now streaming through the middle of the MCG. He's got a man all alone in Gunston. He's got Wingard streaming inside 50. Couldn't quite find him. Had to navigate a tricky bouncing ball. Did so eventually. Oh. Got to his left. Sold some candy on May. Fired a shot on goal. It's across the face. Wingard went with some razzle-dazzle. Tried to provide some spark, but a minor score only for the Hawks. 13-7-85, the Ds. Hawthorne 7-11, 53. 32 points the margin. Bowie takes a couple of steps, then a long kick. Sicily almost took it in the one-on-one. -on -one. Hand pass is OK, though, to uh, Impia, who went back inboard. No mark taken there, and it's a turnover ball again. Oliver, kick to Brown, who's at half four. There's no one between him and the goals. Truck take on Frost, who got in the way, then tried to uh, bash it out of the danger zone. Brown back to his feet, hand pass to Gorn, tried to go the fend, hand passes back to McDonald, top of 50, flying shot on goal. It's going to fall short. It's Spargo in a one-on-one. -on -one. Did he have his uh, neck taken in that contest? No, says the umpire. And it is a rushed behind. 13-8-86, the D. 7-11-53, the Hawks. Bramble marks for the Hawks at left half back. Up the line he goes in the Gunston direction. It eluded his fingertips, but he caught it. Gathered it at ground level. Moore has 
run hard to receive the handball. He's got a player on, middle of the ground. Warple marks on his chest. He wants to get things going fast. He does. Handball over the top from Moore. Third possession in the chain. Miss Callow on the kick. And O'Meara with the crumb snaps around his body. Another attempt on goal from Jager. And this time he puts it through. So the Hawks pull one back. The margin now 27, Melbourne 13, 8, 86, Hawthorne 8, 11, 59. 27 and a half gone, third term, the grandstand AFL. Joel Smith slipped off in that passage of play on the wing just in front of us here. So I don't know whether it like he either rolled his ankle or, or he sort of pulled up short, but uh, left them one short out the back too, the Hawks. That's uh, a rare time where where Melbourne's team defence was all over the shop and they had players ahead of the ball. They had three players loose ahead of the ball there. The Hawks, they could have raffled that one and Amira in the end gets the goal. But yeah, a bit of a concern there for Joel Smith who, and their, sub, yeah, their subs warming up, Cole Chandler. So we'll keep an eye on that. Just keeps them with some sort of a sniff, doesn't it? The Hawks or... I needed that because uh, it was starting to get away from them. 27 points the margin. Gorman, another clearance. Only as far, though, as Moore, who takes it on his chest. True sent half back. Good attacking kick, too. Newcomb's out the back. He kicks inside 50. O'Meara, not quite. Good spoil by Hunt at the last minute. Picked up by Gunston. Viney grabs him. Held to him. And we'll have a ball up. 45 out from goal. Oh, get your hands out, Chad. Wingard trying yes. to take the mark on his chest. One of the first things that Dad used to teach in the backyard, Sully. <laughs> Tossed up, Gorn, won it down. Rivers just tried to get it uh, out of there. Jordan it was, rather. And it ricocheted to Brayshaw, who goes by hand. And Petrarca finds Oliver by foot. Just backward of centre wing. So Oliver, he's shaken the Connor Nash tag. He sends a helicopter punt inside Ford 50. It was not much chop. Frost on the end of it for the Hawks, who released more. Short ball now to Impey, who's at left half back. Moore's been terrific by, behind the ball. He's run and carry. Chain and link has been really important for the Hawks. He had not much on Jarman Impey. He just kept it inside the boundary line. Short ball was OK to Liam Shields. He's going to have to retreat though to Frost, who wheels back inside defensive 50 and goes across the ground now to Scrimshaw. Neat left foot ball across the ground a little further to Blake Hardwick is good. They've transferred the play here, the Hawks, but they're still trapped in defence. Up the line they go, getting in front was Bowie and the attacking move is chopped off. He takes the mark on the outer wing. Mention more, he's had 15 possessions for the quarter. So only 12 mm. kicks, so you're right, he's been uh, he's been everywhere. Kick over the top is good to Rivers. He goes short in turn to Spargo. There's a couple of kicks from goal. He just put this to 30 out directly in front. Brown's got a run at it. When it went with it, went at it rather with one hand. Fritch couldn't get onto it. Impey does. Works the one-two with uh, Day, and he's caught from behind. Jarman Impey gone cold. And Langdon is rewarded for his hard running. Not an area you want to be giving away a free kick. And Langdon will have to kick from 50, about five metres in from the boundary. Jack Scrimshaw looks in some trouble inside defensive 50. In that marking contest, a moment ago, in comes Langdon. He'll kick from just inside 50, hits it pretty well. It's just across the face for one behind. 13, 9, 87 to 8, 11, 59. There's a 28 point margin in favour of the D's. 31 played in the third term. And his eighth possession, Ed Langdon, but we know his value to the team is so much more than that. It's a sign of a good player, isn't it? You're not having a great day, but you put your head down and chase and run down tackle like that. Jarman Impey received the short ball in from full back from. Bramble, he'll go across the ground now to Dylan Moore. He's running right off half back for the Hawks at the moment. He'll kick up the line to Gunston, but the siren will sound. Melbourne put the foot down in that third turn. They're out to a 28 point lead as we turn for home. The D's 13 9 87. Hawthorne 8 11 59. The goal kickers Ben Brown has four for the D's. Tom McDonald two. Toby Bedford has two. Max Gorn has two. Singles to Bailey Fritch, Sam Wiedemann and Christian Petrarca. 
for the Hawks. Jacob Kaczynski has three. And singles to Connor McDonald, Luke Bruce, Chad Wingard, Dylan Moore and Jager O'Meara. Carlton and North Melbourne coming up for most of our audience. We'll head there soon for a preview with Joel Peterson. Meanwhile, if you're listening in South Australia and Western Australia, you'll hear St Kilda and Port Adelaide at the conclusion of this one. You're listening to Grandstand AFL on ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. ABC Sport now has its very own newsletter, and we'd be pumped to have you on board. Woohoo! The ABC of Sport will provide a wrap of all the best stuff that's happening in sport every week. Simply go to abc.net.au slash connect. And get ready for a sport hit. In your inbox every Friday. Get on board with the ABC of Sport newsletter. For content that makes you think. Or allows you not to. The 2022 AFL Premiership season. Grandstand AFL. On ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. Bramble onto it, takes the advantage, shields, inboard, good kick as well. And he finds Kaczynski who had tracked back. Kick the opening goal of the game and another in the second quarter. This for his third. He's pushed it left but snuck it in. So the run-up began at 65 metres out from goal. Who set sail from 35 metres out and put it through. Ben Brown has three. Mark taken by Dunstan out on the left half forward flank. He keeps it low as he goes inside 50. Great kick to the leading Gord. And Gord marks 48 from goal. This will take his best. And his last set shot for goal went as high as the fourth tier. And Shane Warne's stand. Let's see how he goes this time. Gains a couple of extra metres. Goes long and <laughs> does it perfectly. Wingard. Crucial kick at goal, comes in and sneaks it in. And he's pumped. So Ben Brown will take his shot about 30 metres out from goal. In he comes. 25 steps later, leans back on the kick. No mistake, Ben Brown straight through the middle. Scrimshaw went to ground. McDonald come up with it. Cut a ball inside. Beautifully picked up on the gather by Melcham, who released Bedford by hand, and he streams in and kicks another for the Ds. He's second of the nines. This is the 2022 AFL Premiership season. On ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. Welcome back to the MCG. Andrew Mays and Chris Robottom calling the action for you. We'll get our experts' thoughts in just a moment. Earlier today, it was GWS by 59, Fremantle by three. At three-quarter time here, it's the Ds by 28 points. But let's head down the road to Joel Peterson with Carlton and North set to take place after this one in about uh, just less than an hour's time. Joel. G'day, Maisie. Yeah, two teams looking for a bounce back on a Saturday night as the Blues host the Roos under the roof here at Docklands, and it's a nice night to have the roof closed. It is pretty windy and chilly in Melbourne town today after a big day of rain yesterday. The Blues have emerged as finals contenders this year. They're 4-2, and two, just inside the eight, while North are languishing in last spot on the table, 1-5, and five, with their sole victory coming over a depleted West Coast. But if you're a North fan, maybe the glimmer of hope for you tonight is that you've won six of your past seven against Carlton, including last year when Nick Larkey kicked a career-high seven goals. There were plenty of changes for these two sides during the week, and there's been more tonight. A late change for each of them. So Zach Williams comes out of the Carlton team with some Achilles soreness. Lockie Plowman, the defender from the Macedon Cats, comes into the team. And Miller Bergman makes his debut for North Melbourne as a late-in to replace Aidan Corr, who's out through the health and safety protocols. Another debut for Carlton as well with Jack Carroll, their 41st pick out at the 20, uh, 2020 draft playing his first game this evening. So plenty of action off the field. Hopefully plenty of action on it as well tonight. Maisie is the Blues and the Roos do battle. Thanks, Joel. Most of our audience heading to the Docklands after the conclusion of this one. If you're listening in South Australia or Western Australia, you are heading to St Kilda taking on Port Adelaide, which should be a ripper as well. The Saints looking to continue their fast start to season 2022. 28 points the margin at the final break here at the MCG under lights. Our experts tonight, Luke Ball. And Brad Sewell, how do you see this one playing out in the final quarter? Well, the third quarter opened up a lot, as, as it tends to do, and that was always going to favour the Demons. And they were able to get their you know, their run and spread game going and, and you know, find a lot more space. I think the Hawks only had nine tackles for the quarter, so that 
pressure that they were able to bring in the first half wasn't able to maintain that quarter. And it started in the centre bounce. The, the, the Demons, you know, through Gore, Max Gorn in particular, and Petrarca had a big quarter at 13 possessions. Started to get on top around the uh, around the ball and, and and get it out into space and, and, and look a lot more dangerous when they went forward with the ball. And Hawks are trying hard. Uh, and again, they left a few opportunities out there as well when they went forward. But you did, you did get the feeling that as that third quarter went on, the game opened up that uh, it was going to favour the Demons. And some of their other players started to, to get in on the act as well. So uh, it's a challenge, Sully. We were just saying this, yeah. this could go either way. You hope that the Hawks can grit their teeth and fight it out, or you can also see it opening up further and being a 12 or 15, you know, 12, 13 goal up as well. Yeah, you can. I mean, from Melbourne's perspective, you'd want them to really put the foot in the throat here. And, um, I mean, we haven't seen that from this side, really. To really demoralise teams and to really um, to, to rub their nose in it. And I think that becomes a, a, an important element to these, um, these stronger dynasties. So for Mel, we're seeing uh, Joel Smith rolling his ankle yeah, on the I, inside. I reckon, he's, no, I reckon he's done a calf, just looking at that. Um, you know, as he, you know, he's such a dynamic athlete, but I think as he tried to jump and spoil, he, he reached for the calf. So to keep an eye on that. But young Chandler's been activated. He has indeed. Gorm won the clearance, but Mark taken by Hardwick, who seems a little uh, worse for wear himself as he kicks to Newcomb. Newcomb turns it over on the wing. Mark taken by Brayshaw, who goes into the middle. Short ball, Rivers, he marks and finds Oliver, who's got to go. He had a man absolutely mow him down from behind in Kaczynski. Somehow got his handball away. Hawks will affect the turnover, though, and come up with it. Chance to go inside 50 now via the boot of Connor Nash. He's got a one-on-one -on -one streaming back towards goal. Stephen May dived after it, but it was deep into the right forward pocket and it went out of bounds. Yeah, Chad Wingard looks back at the Irishman and says, mate, I had a lovely little hit-up lead there. Five metres of separation. He'll be showing that one on the tape on Monday, surely. So boundary throw in. Five metres around from Hawthorne's right hand behind post. In it comes. Viney in an acre of space had probably more time than he thought. Slammed it on the boot, cleared defensive 50, only as far as Frost for the Hawks. He's handballed a green grass. Harms picked it up. He was tackled. He was worked off his kick. It just spilled out of bounds for a boundary throw in. A good return from Jack Viney, isn't it? I thought early actually when half of his teammates looked like they were still asleep. He was the one that, that got them going a bit. So nice uh, return to, to form for him. D's by 28. Toss back into play by beneath the MCC members. Lovely tap there by Gorn. Got it to Viney, who got it to Oliver. And back to Viney. Ran into a bit of trouble. Hand pass only as far as Lynch of the Hawks. Hand pass now from Moore to Bramble, who shows his jets and gains a couple of metres. Kicks long towards the top of 50. Rivers dropped the mark. And now a chance as he works the one-two with Brayshaw. Tried to spin out of the Mitchell tackle. Mitchell did enough to affect the kick out of bounds on the full. The tackle pressure by the Hawks. They'd try and sustain that now for, uh, you know, for the next 15, 20 minutes. So Max Lynch will take the free kick. Just thought of a wing for the Hawks. Slow, deliberate kick inside 50. Centering sort of ball. Gorn floating across. Got hands to it. Couldn't take it. Wingard came up with it. Handball directly to O'Meara, who was under immediate pressure. Dragged down to the ground. We'll have a ball up, 45 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. They trial by 28 points early in the fourth and final term. Lynch won it down, a little toe poke out of there by Gorn. Hunt will try and paddle it to himself, couldn't bring it under his spell. Came up today, shared it with O'Meara. Now Newcomb, Bowie hands and knees, might have been taken high. Umpire said no, it's all wrapped up. No territory gain, ball up, 45 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. Early stages of the fourth and final term. Couple of repeat stoppages here for the Hawks inside their attacking 50. Gorn's had enough and just whacks it clear. Only as far as Day, though, lost his opponent. Hand pass to McInnes, who hand passes inboard to O'Meara. Further afield to Nash and then back to McInnes, although it was at his ankles. Didn't give him much chance. Melchum's there. He grabs it. They grab him, the Hawks. And he rolls over just to see it out of bounds where the boundary line meets the 50-metre line. Left half forward here for the Hawks. If there to be any chance, they need to score and score quickly. 28 points in arrears of the Ds. 
Toss back into play. Gorm was looking for Petrarca, who came through, but without the ball. Oliver's in there. He's mobbed immediately. It spills free to O'Meara, who snaps to the top of the goal square. And good fist by Lever. Sees it out of bounds in the forward pocket. But good period here for the Hawks. So repeat entries, the Hawks, early in the fourth and final turn. They still trail by 28 points, but a chance to maybe peg one back here. And it comes. Deep in attack. Free kick has been plucked out. It'll go Hawthorne's way. And it looks like Tom Mitchell has received the footy. There might have been a little hold off the ball during the stoppage. And Tom Mitchell absolutely has to convert if any sort of a comeback is to be mounted. He'll kick from about 30 metres out. Just worse than a 45 degree angle. A deliberate approach from Tom Mitchell. The 2018 Brownlow medalist makes no mistake. The Hawthorne cheer squad go up and the Hawks land the first blow of the final term. Perhaps a glimmer of hope. 22 points now the margin. Melbourne 13-9-87. Hawthorne 9-11-65. Five minutes gone. Fourth and final term. Can't see it, surely. You have to have another look at it here. Oh, pretty subtle. Yeah, oh yeah, good. okay. Yeah, he did. He made sure the uh, he made sure the up eye saw it. But good experience. I suppose if you hear the, river, the the message to Rivers is you, you make sure you face the ball and that turn your back on the ball. So you're always at risk of, of giving away a free kick. But well done. Goes back and kicks the goal. He's quite his sort of day for his standards. Only the 15 possessions for Tom Mitchell. He doesn't spend as much time at the centre bounce. I think mm. they're, they're certainly trying to move away. Sam Mitchell. He's certainly trying to rotate. Yeah, Newcomb and Warpool and Nash through there, so perhaps uh, perhaps that rela it's related to that. Mitchell, hand pass to Warpool from the centre. Now to Nash, left foot snap inside 50. Wingard up, punched away from him by Hunt. He want the boundary line. McKinnis sees it over. Top of attacking 50. Another chance here for the Hawks. Just a little bit of momentum building in this final term. They've had the best of it so far. Six minutes old. They trail by 22 points. Umpire tosses it back into play. Wiedemann in the ruck. Lynch down to Mitchell. High kick. Will only just travel the 15. Bowie tried the punch. Umpire waves play on. Mitchell, was he pushed in the back? Yes. Going in a couple of Ds, getting in his back, including Petrarca and Oliver. And he'll line up from right on 50. Has he got it in him? We're looking for some uh, <laughs> teammates to come around the back for the handball here. The Demons plays onto it. There's Sicily. Oh. Day was there yeah, looking Day for it. Lurking. Wasn't much in that free kick, mind you. I thought he, uh, again, dove forward and made sure the umpire saw it. But he kicks this all of a sudden there within three goals, the Hawks. Yeah, it's been a very good start. To this final term for the Hawks. Mitchell gains a bit of distance. It's across the face. Lever punches it through for one behind. Margin 21 points and the door's still open. Seven minutes into this final term. Connor Nash looks like he's come off for Hawthorne. Gone straight down to the race. Brayshaw marks the kick in. Still deep in defence, the Dees. It's in the left back pocket. He clears defensive 50 now with the kick. Wiedemann stands tall in front. There's a free kick to the Hawks, though, for a hold. It'll go the way of Kaczynski. No. Well, it, the umpire pointed in the direction of Hawthorne, but it's going to go to Max Gorn. Kaczynski held him. He's got a man in Petrarca in a little bit of space, but Scrimshaw gets across and knocks it out of bounds right in front of the D's bench. A little bugbear of that one, that one, surely. Just pay the mark. Wiedering takes a terrific yeah. contested mark and he has the ball taken off him and given to a teammate for a soft free kick. Pay the mark. Boundary throw in. Gorn won it down directly to Warple though. He just tumbled one for There's some cries for insufficient intent and there were players within a couple of metres of that ball but Warple's been pinged nonetheless. Brayshaw will take the free kick at left half back for the D's. But it bounced on its point. McDonald would have had that streaming through half forward. Petrarca might have had his one arm held. That's why he went at it one handed. Hand pass over the top. From a standing start to Oliver, who had to go back to Petrarca. 
He flares it out wide. 15 metre pass finds Bowie. So Bowie, who's been composed as always in his young career. High kick to the top of 50. Gorn gets to the front, punched away from him. Dunstan turns tackler. Well done by Newcomb just to get the handball out of there, although it's coming back. Hand pass back to Brayshaw. Off his left. Does he keep it in? Not quite. It's going to drift over. Max Gorn, much like you see in the cricket, stays inside, tries to take it as it lands about a metre outside the boundary line. And out of bounds on the full. Kaczynski to take the free kick a long way from home. Right half back, just dumps a long one up the line. Brayshaw hands to it for the Demons. Rove by McDonald, handball over the top to Day, who retreats back to Newcomb. He looks uh, up ahead and just dumps it on his boot. Lever got across wonderfully, a poor to it. Gathered it under his control and tumbled one up towards the wing. Gathered by Petrarca to Jordan to Oliver, all by hand. Out to Bowie now, neat ball up the line is good. And he finds the sub in Chandler, his first disposal of the afternoon. On the ground for the injured Smith. And he might get it back again. He went back to Brayshaw, and Brayshaw goes back to Chandler. With left foot ball, tried to poke one in in front of Bowie, who was good enough to slide in and mark in front of Tom Mitchell. He's got a man on all alone inside Ford 50. How does Christian Petrarca gain that sort of separation? Sam Mitchell will be having words to whoever was responsible for Petrarca as he marks. He'll kick the goal right on 50. Tightish angle. Someone, anyone, surely. He's a handy player. Yeah, He's standing there by Patty himself. For, yeah. But Petrarca has one for the evening. This to just balloon it back out to 27 points. He'll kick from about 50 metres, just in shooting trouble, Christian Petrarca. He leans back on it. It's sliding across the face. Pat will form. No mark taken. It's kept in. Gorn played Rover. He was stripped of the ball by Scrimshaw. Harms came up with it. Couldn't win a handball. Eventually did. Out the back to Spargo. Right foot snap. Misses. A minor score to the Ds. 13-9. 87 Melbourne, or for 9 12 66. Here comes Sicily with the kick in, goes straight up the middle, attacking play. It's over the back of two Hawks. And that's all too easy for Max Gord. Example of that hard kick. Paul is supposed to just try to punch it long down the line. Gorn, that's a shocker inside 50, <laughs> almost worked too. As Chandler had drifted down, but it fell into the arms of Hardwick. It goes short. It's a nice kick as well to Moore. And Moore straight up the middle to Warple, who didn't want to kick it. Hand pass finally to Moore. And now to Bramble, who's running across the centre square. Gorn just shoves him off the ball. Then he's taken in a tackle by Impey. Umpire says, I'll have it. Ford of the centre circles for the Hawks. Gee, isn't Dylan Moore enjoying a bit of time and space at half back? And stack of it in the second half. And he's used it pretty well too. Up they go. Gorn just smashes it out of the ruck. Gains 25 metres. Lands in the red basket of Fritsch, who uh, released Chandler. He got it off uh, to Jordan. His handball while he was tackled. Missed harms. Fritsch barreled on through. Tackled by Hardwick. Moore went in after it. And there's a free kick. It was high. So Fritsch will get the free kick inside the Senate square. 75 from goal. See something he likes in the forward pocket, but cutting across is that man again, Dylan Moore. It's been very handy down back in defence. His short kick finds Newcomb at right half back. Margin 22 points. They've got to get going quickly here, the Hawks. Just being held up by the Ds at the moment. Newcomb, high kick to centre wing. Lever led all comers, then dropped the chest mark. Kajitsky put his teammate under pressure in Shields and then he had to slide in. It might have been sliding below the knees. It was, and Rivers receives the free kick. Looking for a short option. Viney presents. He hits him on centre wing and links up for the 1 2 as well. Drives the D's inside 50. Brown! Not quite. It's been a night where he could have uh, plucked four or five of those. Bedford into the middle. Mitchell went the mark. Scrimshaw's got a job to do here. He's got Mitchell for help. Oh, that's in the back. Or too high. Take your pick. He gets the free kick, Mitchell, 10 metres out from his defensive goal line. Yeah, that was 
some experience from Tom Mitchell who sort of half propelled himself forward knowing he's going to be tackled earned the free kick it was well done Dylan Moore has it again this time at left half back takes the chest, chest mark cuts inside dangerous ball straight onto the chest of Clayton Oliver just forward of a wing for the D's out of side he's got Jaden Hunt awaiting wide he marks five meters in from the boundary line too far out to score Assesses things and will eventually drive Melbourne inside forward 50s. Narrow sort of kick. It just stays in off hands and over the boundary line for a boundary throw in 15 metres around from the right hand. Behind post, Melbourne attacking 50. Up to 30, Dylan Moore. Has it a guess that that would be a, a mm. career best? A track of 30 for the Demons. Just one Tom Mitchell goal in this final term so far. Toss back into play. Lynch. Won it down, Newcomb to Hardwick. Was it a throw? I reckon he had his arm held there and just propelled it with his right hand. He did. And Oliver with the free kick. And this would be the killer blow with about 10 minutes left to play. So just looking at the replay, Newcomb, yeah, had his left arm held and then just passed it with his right. Umpire deemed it a throw. Just relentless, isn't he? He just keeps working and working, getting to contests, and more often than not gets rewarded. Oliver coming in from 35 out, slight angle to the right, he hits the post. He'll be disappointed with that after 28 disposals this evening. 13-11-89, the D's. 9-12-66, the Hawks. There is still hope after 15 minutes in the final term. Dan Howe marks on his chest at right half back. He's been subbed into the game. Connor Nash is out of the game. We'll try and find out what the diagnosis is. Dan Howe's kick was... Off hands up the line and out of bounds for a boundary throw. He's just fought of a wing broadcast side. 15 and a half gone here in the fourth and final term. Melbourne hold a 23-point advantage over the Hawks. Newcomb won it from the restart. Got it off to Shields, who it is immediately set upon. And have a ball up on centre wing. And how immediately into it. Just throwing a few jabs into Viney. Up it goes. Lynch and Gorn to the ruck work. Dunstan at ground level. He's tackled. Lynch comes in for support. It's dragged in, is it? No, umpire circles and says, I'll have it, please. Another stoppage on centre wing. It's been a bit like that in the last quarter. Lynch down. O'Meara just kicks it out of midair towards the boundary line. And well done by uh, Rivers down there. Not to uh, give up his position. Warple shoved him towards the boundary line. He took it over with him. Throwing... Right half forward for the Hawks. They need to get going quickly here. 23 points the margin, final term. Toss back into play. Gorn was looking for Brayshaw. Might end up with it, almost did. Viney, his hand pass knocked down. For the second time in a row, Amira just goes off the ground. Got it inside 50. Dees with the numbers. Brayshaw to Gorn. So Rivers on his left. Bedford, instead it's Day, who should have copped a free kick for the chop in the arms or too high from Bedford. But it spills out for a boundary throw-in. Ball to be tossed in right half forward again for the Hawks. Who trailed by 23. Kept in touch all the day, but Melbourne just, when they've needed to, have been able to put the foot down and gain some breathing space out of the stoppage. Viney streams away with it, shares it with Petrarca. Chain of handballs. Now here's Bedford who receives the Petrarca handball, gives it back to Viney. Little left foot ball inside 50 is misdirected. It'll be marked by Impey in defence for the Hawks, who just slid across and read the eyes. Just the two disposals last week, Jam Impey. has been a little better than that tonight, who, as he kicks across the ground and finds the chest of Blake Hardwick. And he's still deep in defence. He comes back across the ground today. Now Impey will end up back with it. Still inside defensive 50 here. Now they're out, the Hawks, who have it on the near wing through Liam Shields. He kicks towards half forward. Max Gorn's there, off hands. Warple gathered the crumb, went one way, then the other on Gorn. Nice step. Inside 50 go the Hawks. Gunston direction, couldn't take the mark. Bruce with time and space. Back to Warple now. We'll have a flying shot on goal, and it's good. So Warple adds a consolation. And the lead now... 
back to within three goals. 17 points the margin. Melbourne 13, 11, 89. Hawthorne 10, 12, 72. 18 and a half gone fourth and final turn. It feels like a consolation, Grish, but you're right. He's <laughs> within three goals with, with plenty of time left on the clock. It, it's been that sort of game, isn't it? From halfway through the first quarter, or you know, certainly from the second quarter onwards, it's always felt like Melbourne had uh, had them under control, but again, credit to the Hawks, the way they've kept working, and Warple's a good example of that. He's, a, he's had a pretty good day, up to 23 possessions, and, and gets himself a goal. Just kept working and working, and, and yapping at Melbourne's heels, and really haven't been able to well, Melbourne haven't been able to get the game on their terms for any great periods of play, so one more here, Sully, out of the centre bounce, and it'll at least make Melbourne play the game out. Twitchy. They've kicked the last three of the game. The Hawks, Gorn, he's there been done for shepherding. Advantage pay, kick inside 50. Hawks need a mark, gets over the back of the pack. None were tracking back. Oh. McDonald, good tackle as well. Ball spills free. Hawks still a chance. Gunston in the oh. forward pocket. Was that in the back? Umpire says play on it is. The outer zone umpire calls in the back. Oh, and this will be a shot for goal for Luke Bruce, tight in the right forward pocket. He would the, take his best. Yeah, the end zone missed that. It was, uh, I think it was sort of accidental. Stephen May had a head of steam Oof. up, but he just cannoned into Luke Bruce's <laughs> pack. A little bit of whiplash there. He'll be a bit sore, Bruce. That's a, uh, it's a proverbial brick, you know what, that's run into the back of him. To make well, here it we go. 11 points the margin. Luke Bruce comes in near side all the way. Margin is 16. 20 minutes played, final two. Melbourne haven't kicked a goal since Petrarca kicked one at the 23-minute mark of the third term. So it's almost a, a full quarter now without a goal. So credit to the Hawks. Stayed in at the Hawks. It's been gallant, if nothing else, as the kick from fullback comes out. Melbourne with the numbers. Oliver waiting on the outside. It couldn't get to him. Warple will just scrub one inside 50 along the deck. Hunt had to be clean, and he was. Won the handball up to Brayshaw, who wanted Jordan. He couldn't get the footy. Gunston came through, gathered the footy. He was tackled by Brayshaw. We'll have the ball up, 45 metres out from goal, just inside the boundary line. Hawks pressing. Goal would be interesting. 16 points the margin, 13-11-89. Hawthorne 10, 13, 73. Up they go. Petrarca at the fall. Couldn't get the handle. It'll spill over for a boundary throw in. 55 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. Pressure's just been dialed up by the Hawks. Their intensity around the contest. They're keeping the ball in for a little bit longer and just managing it to, uh, to knock it their way. 39,425 in this evening. It's an entertaining contest. Still isn't over with... Over five minutes left on the clock. O'Meara sees it out for a boundary throw in. Right half forward. Hawks almost, need something from this stoppage. Oh, sorry, Maisie. Almost sensing a little bit of danger, Melbourne. They've got their, their A team around the footy. Petrarca, Viney, Oliver and Gorn back into the ruck. So they're sensing they just want to play this one out. Gorn v Lynch. Gorn. Great clearance. Hand pass to Viney, who knocked it to the advantage of Harms, who just kicks to space at left half forward. Ball bounces towards the boundary line. Fritch there to see it over, as is Bedford. That's a win for the Ds. Gaining some territory and killing some time off the clock. Still over five minutes left on the playing clock. 22 gone, final term. 16 points the margin in favour of Melbourne. Tom Mitchell back on the ground. Spent some time off, just getting patched up. In it comes. Gorn wins it down again. Straight to Oliver. Wrapped up by Howell. Swung as he kicked the footy. It eluded Petrarca. Hardwick took it on the bounce at right half. Back just kept it inboard. His kick was affected. It spilled to Oliver, who got it to Gorn. Back to Oliver. Handball now out wide to Jordan. Demons will go inside 50 via his boot. Two on two. Frost at the back. Tracks it to the boundary. Bedford kept it in. Couldn't gather the footy. And oh. it'll be all wrapped up deep in attack. Is there a free kick, kick in the back. back? So Hardwick taking his time to emerge. It'll go the way of Fritsch of the Demons, though. Tight angle right up against the boundary line. 30 metres around from the Melbourne goal. He's lining up to kick around the corner. Long side for him, but... Skilled enough, isn't he, to kick this on his right? So Fritsch just tries to curl it in, and there was never enough curl on the footy. A minor score. He misses. Margin 17 points. Hawks go quickly. McKinnis takes the mark. 
Hand pass over the top to Impey, who wants to get running. He almost ran himself into trouble, so is forced to kick quickly. Bruce, in a one-on-one, -on -one, just slaps it forward. Mitchell will get onto the end of it. His hand pass missed the target. Ball bounced away from uh, Langdon. He's good enough to pick it up. Hand pass to Lever, who bounced out of one tackle. And a hand pass to Brayshaw, around the boundary line. Good kick to Brown, right half forward for the Ds. Brown marks on his chest, outstretched arms, reels it in. He's too far out to score. Ten metres in from the boundary. At right half forward for the Ds. He'll send them inside 50 where a pack will form. Sicily at the front through his hands. Might be a free kick to Sicily. There is. Hawthorne will play on through the advantage. Moore back to Day. Deep in defence. He shares it with Impey by hand. They're trying to just conjure something here, the Hawks. Day forced oh. to go back inboard. <laughs> And it's straight off the side of his boot, and he's turned it straight over to Milksham. A regulation kick for a player of his class, and he's absolutely butchered it inside defensive 50. And Milksham could go back and put it to bed. Will Day, he'll be replaying that in his mind as he goes to bed tonight. Over and over and over. Melksham the beneficiary, he'll kick for goal from 45 metres out, no real angle to speak of. In he comes, Melksham to punish the Hawks, he only just made the distance. There was no one on the line, but it snuck through for a minor score anyway, so Will Day off the hook. Straight up the middle with the kick, Mark drop by Warple, almost bouncing out of a tackle, it was Lever. And he's wrapped up true centre half forward for the D's. I think it's some height up the middle. The Hawks they have to take a risk now, so they're always going to go long and straight from the kick out. But they're kicking to Warple and Tommy Mitchell. Where are the keys? Three straight kick kicks the margin in favour of the D's. Gorn, defensive side of the stoppage, but it's one here by the Hawks. Bruce to Mitchell to half forward. Kozitski had it punched away from him. He'll run onto it. Hand pass inside 50 to Wingard, who lines up for goal on his left. It's across the face for one behind. Needed to nail that for them to be any chance. 17 points the margin, 26 played final term on Grandstand AFL. Gee, that was a massive chance for the Hawks. Wingard on his left boot. You back him from there most times, but as you called, Maisie, you slid it across the face for a minor score. So the D's now at left half back, off hands, down to Dunstan, who shares it with Oliver, off to Harms by hand. Left football, James Harms. It's into the Hawthorne interchange bench. It'll be a free kick to the Hawks. On the boundary line, centre wing, 26 and a half gone. They trail by 17. They've kept this game alive. They've got to go. Sicily now. Long ball inside 50. Who can take a mark? Fist from the back. McDonald at Felder. Warple had some time and space. He slapped it forward into the path of Bramble. He couldn't gather it. Came out to Harms. Kick from McDonald. Bramble pounced on the loose footy. Left foot ball around the corner. Went all the way to the line, but it was knocked over by Langdon who played goalkeeper, big defensive play. Melbourne lead by 16 points. 13-13, 91-10, the Hawks. Well, they're going to fall short, but they've been brave for the Hawks, haven't they? they? Have. They've kept trying, kept Melbourne goalless in this last quarter, so that's a huge win. Even then, still attacking hard, getting numbers, committing numbers forward of the ball, the drop of the ball inside 50, getting a shot on goal. Long kick by May. Warple leapt high. Couldn't take the mark. Bowie out the side. He snaps over his shoulder. Fritch will get onto this, and Bowie was put in the turf anyway. So it was a mark. Aura down the field. Free kick. Take your pick. Fritch in front of the MCC members. Right on halfway. Keeps it low. Up high and early as Melksham. He takes the juggling mark on the way down and might have a bit of regret for his troubles as well. He'll get to his feet slowly. And then wheels around. Oh, he had Viney all on his own, 30 metres from goal. Instead, blasted over his head, and Day takes the mark. Hand pass over the top is okay to Scrimshaw, who's away through left half back. Dying members of the fourth and final term. Scrimshaw's kick is a good one to Moore. He plays on by hand to McGuinness. Back to Moore outside of the right boot. He's got Wingard in time and space on the outer side. He took the mark and progressed things by hand to Gunston. Left half forward. Fires goalward. Kazitsky's waiting all alone, 10 metres out from goal. He's got to go back and kick it. But I think the clock might just elude him. Around the corner he goes, Kazitsky. He adds a fourth. Reels in the margin to 10 points. 
the final siren can't be far away now. 13-13-91 Melbourne, Hawthorne 11-15-81, 10-point ball game at the MCG. Hard to be critical of the Hawks. A great transition of play from deep in the back 50. Uh, they're happy to continue to run, take the game on. They're playing on um, and working pretty hard both ways. Yeah, yeah I reckon they're a fit team. I, I said it, watched them against, the, against Geelong. I thought they... We're running harder at the end of the game on Easter Monday against Geelong. I didn't see them fade out. We, obviously, they faded out rather against the Swans last week. But, yeah, they've been super impressive today. We, we said at three-quarter time, this could be a 12-goaler, depending on how Melbourne want to approach this last quarter. But I think it's been Hawthorne. They've been you know, willing to continue to work, to run. And, uh, as we said, they're going to fall short. But, yeah, they've been super brave. Just up in the middle. Gorn with the clearance, floats a ball to half four. Day takes it on his chest. But it's seven in a row to start season 2022 for the D's. A brave Hawthorne tonight for Melbourne, prevailed by 10 points. It's a grand old flag, it's a high flying flag. It's the emblem for me and for you. It's the emblem of the team we love. Team of the red and the blue Every heart beats true For the red and the blue And we sing this song to you Should all acquaintance be Keep your eye on the red and the blue So Hawthorne led by two points at quarter time Melbourne by nine at the major break 28 points was the margin at three quarter time and they close out 10-point winners. Brown with four, McDonald and Bedford and Gord two apiece. And singles to Fritch, Petrarca and Wiedemann. For the Hawks, four for Kaczynski. Singles to Bruce, O'Meara, Wingard, McDonald, Mitchell, Moore and Warple. It is the D's prevailing by 10 points here at the MCG. It's a grand old flag, it's a high-flying flag. It's the emblem for me and for you. It's the emblem of the team we love, the team of the red and the blue. Every heart is true for the red and the blue, and we sing this song to you. Should all the acquaintance be forgotten, keep your eye on the red and the blue. So Melbourne head to seven and zip to start their premiership defence. Meanwhile... Hawthorne to three and four, and very much amongst that chasing pack. Just a reminder, if you're listening to us, you're uh, most likely headed to Carlton and North Melbourne at the Docklands. Uh, our South Australia and Western Australian listeners are off to St Kilda Port, and if you're listening in Darwin, you'll head to the NRL to the Eels and the Cowboys. We've got about uh, three and a half minutes, gents, before we have to head off. Uh, Luke Ball. And Brad Saul, sum that up for well, us. Well, you'll do the vote, surely. But, I mean, Melbourne, they get the four points in the end and they get a, get away reasonably unscathed. A bit of a concern around Joel Smith, who's been an important player for them. So uh, we'll, we'll have to you know, follow up on that. But I think the Hawks are the story today. That, that was super brave uh, again. And they're starting to build a brand, surely, that uh, is sustainable and it's consistent. They're, they're hard to play against. Uh, and, you know... Three quarter time, as we said, you know there was a, there was the the worry that it, they might drop off again, like like they did last week. But um, they they fought, they they ran. I think they're a really fit team. They you know really run really hard, and and they made Melbourne you know reach into their bag of tricks today a few times. So and I think I thought they were really impressive, and they can walk off you know with their head held really high. We know where they are in, t- in their development, and we know that Melbourne are the benchmark team, albeit they had four or five of their very best twenty two out. So. Uh, it just shows that, you know, in this competition, that if you've got a few out and you're a little bit off, which they certainly were early, that you're going to get challenged by a team that really comes hungry and, and willing to work. Yeah, I think Hawks get more out of this than what Melbourne do. Uh, as you said, they're building a brand, and uh, in this stage of their development, all you can ask for is effort and intent, and we're getting that consistently week on week, and albeit maybe not four quarters just yet, but... Um, their, their effort cannot be knocked. And for Melbourne, they're just ticking the box at the moment. They're getting through. They're building. And importantly, they had a few key players out, but that enabled some depth. It enabled them to play some guys that may not have otherwise got some game time. Uh, votes. Give one vote to Petrarca. He ended up with 31 and kicked one goal. One. Two votes to 
Oliver, um, he was particularly important early and incredibly dom dominant. 33 disposals, 10 contested possessions, 8 inside 50s, 11 score involvements, and the three votes to Max Gorn. Um, incredibly dom dominant in the ruck. He's had 29 disposals, kicked two goals, had 34 hitouts and nine clearances. So three to Gorn, two to Oliver, and one to Petrarca as uh, the D's finish. 10-point victors, 13-13-91 to the Hawks, 11-15-81. Just for the D's fans in, in 30 seconds or so, Simon Goodwin sitting at home watching that this afternoon. Is he just ticking a box going, yep, tick that one off, we got through it. What does he... It wouldn't have been an easy him? watch for him. No. Yeah, he, would have, he would have been frustrated. <laughs> uh, he'll be interested to have a fly on the wall. Um, I mean, he's, he, he, he knows... He knows it's a, it's a long game at the moment, and, and, and they'd be ironing, still ironing some stuff out and giving some opportunities to some players. He knows you need a squad of 30, 32 to, to go really deep. But, yeah, there, was, there would have been some things that would have really frustrated and annoyed him early today. Put, I put the so score we, away. He just yeah. needs to drill down their processes and systems and focus on where they fell short. Even the three blokes, I mean, the, the three superstars that get the votes in the air and they put, you know... Oh, they not, played three not, quarters yeah, each, yeah, you know? not, not their best games, were they? they? They were just when they needed to be. They stood up. They... Uh, you know, and Gorn, sides, dude. that's right. And Gorn, you'd expect to be dominant today, play coming up against a really young ruckman. But uh, they do have gears, and you know they are they are good to watch, and, and they are the benchmark of the competition. So a tick for the D's for the win, but a tick for the Hawks for their competitiveness. Bawley, Sawley, as always, thank you very much for your time on Grandstand AFL. Chris, great to see you up here in Melbourne, and uh, I hope we put on a show for you at the MCG. Thanks very much. Back in the studio as well to Adam and also to Jules. Now for our SANWA listeners, you're off to St Kilda Port. Everyone else, you're headed.